Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. All this wonderful day.
Jesus, take your place. In the midst of your people, we have nothing to say until you speak to us. We ask you tonight in the name of Jesus, take your place. Only your presence brings freshness. Only your presence brings illumination. Oh, take a hold of my spirit, my soul, my body, my intellect. I align, I align, I yield myself. Take a hold of my body, my spirit, my soul, my faculties. May they come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. May they come under the influence of the mighty one. Sing in the spirit. Make melodies from your inner man.
worshiping. Just keep worshiping. Yeah. There's something about the presence of When you see that we keep singing like this, it's because the Holy Spirit is doing something. Whenever he stands, you, you hook on to what he's doing and you don't rest. Please help me sound. Yeah. Just a song that I heard in my spirit now. Oh, oh, oh. Say whoming.
Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is saying, My glory will I share with no man. I share my glory with no man. This honor no man takes to himself. I will do a walk in your midst, say the Spirit of the Lord. And it will be swift. It will be swift. I will do a walk in you. And it will be swift. I will make you the tabernacle of my glory, say the Spirit of the Lord. I will do a walk in you and it will be swift. I will do a walk in you and it will be swift. Through the ashes and through the pain, I birth my glory in you, say the Spirit of the Lord. Through the ashes and through the pain, I birth my glory in you. Through the ashes and through the pain, I bring upon you new mantles. I bring upon you new graces. Yeah. prophecy is falling on people right now right now right now I see it like like a cloth like a garment is a spiritual garment is falling on people right now the spirit of prophecy yeah. 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 even outside I see it like a garment falling on people yeah. prophecy is like a garment men and women are wearing that garment right now prophetic word to the worship team new songs from heaven say the spirit of God new songs upon our worship team new songs upon our worship team is coming like mantles upon your spirit it's like radio waves into your spirit man worship team radio waves you will bet songs in the spirit you will bet songs in the spirit you will bet songs in the spirit you will bet songs in the spirit. Songs in the spirit. You will hear them in the night time as you sleep. You will hear them in the morning. You will hear the voice of angels. They will sing those songs. And you will pick those signals. They are songs of new seasons. They are melodies of victory. They are songs of triumph. 
they are songs that speak the language of victory they are songs that empower the saints they open them to new dimensions in the spirit they are songs of the lamb they are songs of the lion they are songs from heaven they are sounds of the spirit yeah. I'm announcing to you that seasons of victory are ahead the Lord says I'm announcing to you that seasons of victory are ahead beyond the shadows are new realms of victory beyond the pain are new dimensions of trial beyond the shadows are new levels of grace for you will sing this song in the days to come say the spirit of the Lord they are sounds of victory only the victorious can sing this song they are melodies of triumph they are melodies of victory say the spirit of the lord yeah, yeah, yeah. the Lord says remember not the former things nor consider the things of old weep not for I bring you new joy say the spirit of the Lord I bring to an end your season of weeping I bring to an end your season of weeping you may not know how it will happen but I will move by my wisdom say the spirit of the Lord you do not need to know how it will happen for it will be swift and it will be strange say the spirit of the Lord you may not know how it will happen but it will be a move of the spirit and like the twinkling of an eye i will put a melody upon your lips a song of victory a song of victory a song of victory yeah. say unto you remember not the former things nor consider the things of old forget about the pain of the past for the glory that is before you is greater than the pain of the past it has been a season of birthing said the spirit of the lord have i not said as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son you have been in a season of birthing the pains are for a reason the pains are building strength in you to contend with the seasons of glory that are ahead. Weep not, my child, say the Spirit of the Lord. Weep not, for the lamentations of yesterday will be a sound you will hear no more in your destiny. For the lamentations of yesterday will be a sound you will hear no more. Yeah. 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 Rejoice for your salvation draw it now say the spirit of the Lord rejoice for your salvation draw it now rejoice for your salvation draw it now I say again it will be swift it will be swift like the twinkling of an eye it will be swift yeah. 
Spirit, go ahead. Make those melodies to him in the spirit. Let the melodies rise. It's an incense of worship. It's an incense of worship. Hallelujah. I see the angels of the Lord. Chariots fighting battles this is what i see in the realm of the spirit i see battles contentions i see a mighty warfare going on in the realm of the spirit a warfare for the new levels i see the arsenals of hell being torn down and i hear the saints with tears in their eyes shouting the song of the lamb and the song of victory Just keep soaking in the glory. There is warfare going in the realm of the spirit. Don't think you are wasting your time. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Creation. Creation. 
will worship his majesty sing it the nations will worship It's unto you, O oh God. It's unto you. Let this rise as an incense of worship. mighty presence of God in this place there is a strong manifestation of the spirit of prophecy many of you will begin to prophesy 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 it's a strong unction of the spirit it's not the programming of the flesh it's by the strength of the spirit yourself that all you get in God's presence is just the word worship teaching then you share the grace you must always come into God's presence expecting him to move in any way and to do anything believe me you may not know the kinds of activations that are happening to people right now in this place see church is not designed just to be a place where you come and sit down and watch people and laugh there are times that all you need is to come and press into an encounter that you step out of that meeting and all of a sudden your sensitivity something has happened all of a sudden you find out that the burdens are lifted all of a sudden you find out 
that the chains are broken all of a sudden you find out that the power that comes from the throne does something to your life this is what his presence does see that all of a sudden in that atmosphere when the spirit of prophecy the bible says the testimony of jesus every time the true spirit of prophecy comes into a place all of a sudden the spirit of god meeting the needs of people touching people challenging people opening them up explaining to you your encounters of the secret place showing you why the things that happen happen giving meaning to your encounters this is the only way church will not be boring yeah, 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 Listen, all I'm seeing in the spirit is light, light falling on people. That's all I'm seeing. It's an illumination, strong impartation of light that's what is happening all over the building god is opening the eyes of men giving explanations for some of you the light that is coming is direction strange direction by the spirit some of you this light that is coming is answered prayers that's the answer to prayers coming as that light from the throne Listen, let me tell you something. Many of us have robbed the Holy Spirit from finding expression. Some of these songs you see me coming, bringing from the Spirit. Many of us, God has been wanting to pass through you. But this rigidity we put, there is, there is a sense of religion. I am busy trying to make money, trying to read books, trying to be successful. We, our spirits are not malleable enough for the Holy Spirit to pass through us. The restraint is too much. That's why we don't get this sound. That's why our discernment is very low. Because we are busy. It takes, it takes staying in the present. Let me tell the truth. You will never touch certain frequencies in the spirit. When you are busy around trying to combine spirituality and many other things. The presence of God is a full time assignment. You must stay. Stay until the sound comes. Stay until the melodies come. Stay until the power comes. Listen. For when he comes, he comes with light for when he comes he comes with ease for when he comes he comes with illumination many of you have been praying oh lord take me to a new level it's not just by prayer stay in the presence stay in the glory that's the key that's the secret it's not just moving around no the glory doesn't just fall overnight when you stay your spirit man begins to acclimatize to the frequency of the spirit that's how it works it's not a hit and run thing you just rush and come out and then you want to hear with accuracy then you want his glory to flow it doesn't work like that there is a there is a staying there is a staying i tell you it's a law you must stay
the church has learned to hurry God and we are hurrying the glory of God out of our lives there are many of you here listen when you started out with God you had the time and the staying power but I don't know what it is that has happened God is challenging us that secret place is now a strange place for many of us we are busy doing ministry we are busy trying to make a living we are busy trying to move around the church has lost the art of the secret place the secret place is not a place it's a place where you stay like a waiter stay until his glory comes and then when his glory comes there is a signature upon your life undeniable The secret place is the place of power the secret place is the place where you have a message if God does not sit upon you with his glory you have no message you can talk it's not about Rema it's about the presence that follows it you can preach all you can but there is a glory this is a testament of his visitation upon your life that's what creates impact that's what breaks chains. I like you to pray and say, Lord, show me your glory. Greater levels of your glory. Please pray. Expose me to that realm. Superior dimensions of your glory. I have tasted of your glory. I have seen what your grace can do. But Lord, there is a desperation within my spirit to taste of something tangible Please sit down if you can for those who can sit there will be many impartations the spirit of prophecy is strong in this place night Some of you will never recover from tonight's meeting. I tell you, you will not even know what is happening to you. It's an encounter. Listen, listen. If you're a man of God in this place, I submit to you. You are wasting the time of God's people if you cannot convey the presence to that atmosphere. Yeah. That's how habits are broken. That's how chains are broken. That's how impartations happen. It's not just by laying on of hands. How many people can you lay your hands on? Let the glory come and there is transformation. Let the glory come and something is happening in people. Let the glory come and testimonies, sicknesses. Many of you are sitting down right now and sicknesses will just disappear. No, it can't stand the glory. Prayer lives have been revived different dimensions of the spirit that's why the place is called koinonia it's not a place of discussion it's an atmosphere of encounter Lord, let nothing restrain your hand in the midst of your people. Let nothing restrain your hand. Don't rob God from finding a vessel in you. Don't rob God 
from finding a truly anointed vessel in you. See, let me tell you something. If you follow these rubbish people are doing of just visiting God's presence to come and receive breakthrough and prosperity and power and rush back, you will never find God that way. Please believe me when I tell you this. God is not an object you use. You see that? There are some of us, our gifts are dormant for a very long time. Very long time. That press in the spirit to activate you. Listen, it's an anomaly when you remain in the same spiritual level for a very long time. Something is wrong. And when you are rising, it's obvious. Everybody knows that there is a transition. Some of us are in the same position for a very long time because we are giving God barely enough. See that? There are some of us, our dreams have ceased. Our visions have ceased. Our encounters have ceased. Our passion for his glory has ceased. Listen, every time the experience you used to have with God ceases, something stopped it. It never stops by default. Are we together now? There are many of us, you used to see things before they happen. Right now, it has dried up out of nothing because you are trying to look for a wife or look for a husband. Hallelujah. Dry up. There's nothing there again. No power. No grace. All these things we keep making noise around it in church. One person falls down. One person falls down and we jump around. That's nonsense. There are higher dimensions. There are superior levels in the spirit. Beyond calling names and phone numbers. There is the spirit, not the gift of prophecy. There is the very spirit of it. The very operation of the prophetic realm. Where people receive testimonies of Jesus without you speaking any message. The spirit of prophecy. Men live with encounters they cannot explain. No matter how hardened you are, when you come into this atmosphere, something must surrender. That's what happens when his presence comes. You cannot change men by the excellency of persuasions. No. It doesn't work that way. The presence. That's what brings transformation. The presence. That's what brings change. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's only a price that very few desire to pay. Because we like things cheap. We like things easy. Anything that commits us, we do not want. We want results, but we hate process. Or we want to be mightily used. You want to stand and see the glory of God move around. Brother, there is a price. It's not a gift, it's a reward. It's a reward for diligence. It's a reward for surrender. It's a reward for total yieldedness. I used to hear Benny Hinn say it. Total yieldedness. That's the price for the anointing. Total yieldedness. Not half-hearted yieldedness. How many musicians are here? You have not brought one song from the Spirit. It's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your call. It's an indictment of, on your gift. There are melodies in the spirit like waves. But there is a frequency with which your spirit must rise to. And then you will capture these things. The, the level of the sophistication of your spirit is the level to which you will capture. Many of us, our prayer lives have died, gone cold, gone cold, gone cold. You only pray until you feel tired. See, let me tell you why many of us, our prayer lives are not effective. We are only praying to justify prayer. You don't pray for the purpose of touching realities in the spirit. You see that? Yes. At, you can pray and then after one hour or two hours, you can say, I have tried. That's a different. You are only praying to be better than somebody else. But there is a way you come with a desperation. And you pray that your spirit will make contact. If that contact happens in 10 minutes, you end. If that contact happens in 5 hours, you continue. See, it's not about religion. 
but it starts with a desperation a desperation a desire the first message the Lord is communicating tonight is let there be a revival in your spirit man get back those mantles and those gifts wherever you threw them let those dreams come alive again because in those dreams are the puzzles of your destiny a little here a little there before the year runs out we're going to take a teaching on angels and the ministry of angels you see many of us have lost touch with spiritual reality it's dangerous in this time and age to just move sensually that the limit of your perception is a three-dimensional realm you will be a victim of too many things you've got to access a frequency that is higher than the material realm to supply you the strength and the illumination hallelujah I challenge everyone here there is more that God can do with your life if you will give him space God is not a boyfriend he's not a girlfriend he's not looking for an affair he wants a relationship a very serious one you give God an affair you will get nothing out of it if God is one of the many important things in your life believe me you will never find him believe me you will never find him listen listen this desire is not for men of God this desire is for everyone who wants God don't you think that this bias is for pastors no no the spirit of man was designed to only find satisfaction in his presence nothing in this world will satisfy oh jesus you're the cup that pull you on dry nothing in this world will satisfy jesus you're the cup that pull you Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Sing it just one more time. Your presence, Your presence is heaven. Is heaven Your presence is heaven to Your me. Your presence is heaven. the Lord. I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. God bless you especially for our visitors and many who are coming for the first time. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now today our meeting will be very different. We are going to take I'll respond to a few questions and answers. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit put it in my heart. There are so many of us that have questions about the Holy Spirit, about encounters spiritual growth will give us an opportunity maybe 30 minutes and then i'll just minister to people there are people who need to be ministered to and so that's what we're going to do help us with another mic please um now i know that please listen many of us have questions especially as regards intimacy encounters our spiritual lives i'm trusting that god will grant grace we we'll use all the questions as a message and just communicate it and please i want you to feel free make sure that you ask questions that are applicable to our spiritual growth not just something that is a bias for some of us is something regards prayer your prayer life um, your word life if there's no mic you can i can take one and then you can use this hallelujah so um 
because it's not only important to teach there are some of us who have encountered certain challenges maybe in the dispensing of the gift of the spirit in our lives or anything that has to do with the holy spirit and intimacy and our spiritual growth and i'm trusting that god will grant us um a few minutes that's deliverance happening to her something is leaving her that devil of darkness leave her right now in the name of jesus christ there's one other lady with this same situation right now in this place the power of god is coming upon her this is a spirit that has been tormenting her lord wherever that lady is right now i declare deliverance by the power of the holy spirit that lady is in the congregation here in the name of jesus christ it's like fire that will come upon you i judge that spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ right now i decree judgment i pass a note of judgment to that wicked spirit that is bringing oppression praise the lord so we're going to have a little q and a and i'll respond and maybe uh, on one or two occasions we can allow one or two people to respond the questions will bless many of us because it will answer it will attempt to answer or solve some of the puzzles that are around our lives i don't want our spiritual lives to be um, without accuracy some of us may have been making the same mistake for a long time that's why we are not getting certain results spiritually hallelujah some of us may be pressing into god for instance there are people who press into god but necessarily they find out that they are always backsliding not that they are sleeping around or doing anything immoral but that staying power is like there is a spiritual meter every time you get to a dimension it pulls you back you are making progress but the graph is not straight it's like it goes up forces you down then you have to pray and fast your way there are many of us who do not know how to command strength in the spirit like a gentleman who uh, i think someone sent me a text i don't know if he's here he sent me a text in the afternoon um, and he said every time he's in the presence of god or anytime he's talking to people about the glory of god he starts yawning mysteriously like yawning and um, some of you are already nodding in agreement it's happening to me too what is the meaning of that <laughs> are you yawning out demons are you absorbing the glory what exactly is happening so um please be smart don't be rude to the protocol people just walk as they direct you we're going to have a few questions um i will use the questions some of the questions will actually culminate to teachings and i'll use the opportunity and just address things don't be biased make sure that you ask things that are relevant if your question is not relevant to our meeting we ignore it is that all right let's pray in one minute and say father speak to me go ahead and pray thank you jesus hallelujah praise the lord okay so um we'll come in threes we'll just have the first three they will stand and then if there's any need so let me see by wave of hands i'll point people out okay number one you can stand up come second number two and then um let's have a lady figure all right that lady waving her hands in blue come quickly appreciate them as they come be smart tell us your name straight to the point if you're wasting our time please we'll, we'll send you to your seat let me tell you in advance so you are not embarrassed go ahead turn to the congregation god bless you go ahead okay good evening sir is it working yes sir um good evening sir thank you yes, bless sir. you yes sir my question is um about visions visions yes sir what, what are they visions okay yes sir what are they and are visions a sign of spiritual growth that's um like spiritual visions are they limited to a particular set of people people who do not have them as frequently as are they growing? yes are they is it a sign that they are growing okay I, I want to visions are a dimension of supernatural encounters right um there are many levels dimensions and types of supernatural encounters 
visions are just um, a dimension of supernatural encounters that affords a person an opportunity to access realities in the spirit it could be realities that reveal the past the present or the future you understand it could also be realities that expose that person to um, spiritual happenings now the whole goal of visions and, and i want us to pay attention the whole goal of visions and encounters any supernatural encounter is prophetic in its dimension are we together now so every time we talk of prophecy it's not just speaking any encounter that exposes you to access any realm beyond the physical is a prophetic dimension so in every man there is a prophetic dimension let me call it a latent prophetic dimension now those who are called into the prophetic or apostolic office the advantage of the apostolic office is that on the strength of that office you can work you should work in all the fivefold offices because it's an administrative office it heads and coordinates the spiritual activities are we together now but in a typical prophetic office by default the moment you there is an election of grace upon you inclined towards that prophetic office there are it's like spiritual configurations by default are we together now now your spiritual life and your spiritual growth can add to it but anybody called into the prophetic office or any dimension of prophetic operations by default can be open to the realm of the spirit that's why you can find people seeing visions who are not born again are we together now remember he told jeremiah the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i had already called you and ordained you to be a prophet are we clear now so visions and generally all supernatural encounters are a dimension of the prophetic and the goal of visions dreams is illumination and direction sometimes also impartation it gives you illumination access to light and information right sometimes it gives you direction but in many cases it also comes with impartation that's why some of us can have dreams have visions encounters we don't exactly know why they came but they leave residues of impartations as we get up and begin our normal life we see that certain possibilities in the spirit has been activated and we may not know at what point it was activated like wisdom like certain virtues do you understand so now but that does not mean listen if you are truly growing spiritually right even if you are not called into the prophetic dimension or prophetic realm if you are growing spiritually the the presence of god has a prophetic effect on everyone whether you're a prophet or not this is the reason why somebody on the strength of sheer intimacy with the holy spirit can access a level that will make him look like a prophet but in reality, he's not a prophet. He's just one who has pressed into God to an appreciable dimension. It's like an aura of God's presence. Now, the Bible does not use visions and dreams to qualify spiritual growth. Although experience has shown us that as you progress spiritually, you will begin to um, get impulses. It's called spiritual perception. In fact, I preached a message on that. You can get it with the media after the service. Are we are we understanding now because there are some of us here who are praying we love god but aside from dreams and maybe what we call intuition what people like kenneth hagin will call the knowing of the spirit we've not had any supernatural encounter as it were and sometimes we get intimidated and i think i must correct that because some of us get intimidated because someone is now talking and saying um um Ogashew saw something and he's prophesying and he's saying oh i saw something and you you are standing frustrated that you do not have visionary encounters in terms of um encounters you are awake you are alive and you are caught up or a picture comes before you or the audible voice of god or some kind of supernatural encounters it does not mean you are not growing spiritually are we together now there are two spiritual indices to measure spiritual growth number one is your degree of conformity into the image of the christ that's the first biblical sign of spiritual growth 
So if you are born again and there is no transformation in you, you are not conforming to the image of Christ, believe me, your salvation is questionable. In fact, let me, let me press on this before we continue. There are many people who think they are born again. And, and please, I don't want you to doubt your salvation, but I must be sincere with you. There are many people who think they are born again. And I tell you the truth by the Lord, they are not. They are not saved. The meaning of that is if they die today, they are going to hell. Are we together now? Please, don't, don't trivialize salvation. Salvation is the, is the supplanting of the very life of God in a mortal man. Are we together? The Bible says you are born of the incorruptible seed. Remember? Of the word of God. So there is a seed. The same way a man plants a seed in his wife. What do you expect that seed to do? There should be fertilization. Is that true? And eventually, as time progresses, that seed, right, begins to produce. So you cannot tell me you are born again. Listen, that you are born again. The life of Christ is in you. And you are exposed to the atmosphere of the spirit. And progressively, we do not see, after a prolonged period of time, evidences of conformity to the image of Christ. Something is wrong with that salvation. Are we together now? So it's very, very important. So that's one index. The second index is your degree of comprehension. The degree to which you are having understanding on the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. So that your degree of conformity, to what degree do I see Christ in you? In fact, Paul puts it this way. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. He was talking to people who were already saved. So conformity to the image of Christ and access to the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. These two will naturally produce empowerment, impartation, access to the anointing. Are we together now? So that's it about vision. God bless you. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, sir. Sir, I want to know... Well, What's your name? My name is Oko Sampotensi. Okay, yes. When um, you, there is a signal that an attack is coming on your spiritual life, and you you pray against it but then actually you are going down spiritually sorry again you're going down spiritually your spiritual life you are going down spiritually yeah kind of you have an attack is coming on your spiritual life and then you attack from hell construct your question pray, very logical so that pray, you, prayer life for instance is your going down life is going down yes and then you you pray you pray against it then a time comes that what the very incidents that causes you to go down finally happens although you prayed against it and it, it happens to um you you feel that okay you failed and then the spirit comes to um encourage you that as if it's it, it is it was proposed by god okay so what is the question so now? my question now is uh, when are, are those attacks actually and after the attack you grow higher are those attacks actually um ingredients to for you to grow spiritually to live you the level it, you are you mean a demonic attack uh, on your spiritual life for instance okay um his, his question has many sides to it i'm not getting exactly what he's asking but if i understand you well you mean your prayer life is going down yes are we together yes and then what happens there is a there, there is even a, there is a knowing in you that there, there that, is an attack yes a demonic attack on yes, your life yes okay and then for instance there is maybe a habit God has delivered you from and then there is a knowing that um, it's coming back or something the devil wants to bring and it you back. pray yeah. and you pray against it let it not be let it not be and Lord then it still happens. and then it happens okay. then you feel like it's man it's gone then there is an encouragement that as if this thing is proposed and then after that you feel a lifting higher okay. I think I get what you're saying no 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 it's not a habit is not proposed to lift you up spiritually what you see is an interplay of your carelessness and the mercy of God and the grace of God. There are many things interwoven. So you don't justify that because you grew from it. It meant God brought it. Now, we must understand that there are different attributes of God that um, it is part of the love of God. Now, love in the spirit is not affection. Love in the spirit is a realm with many dimensions. There is a dimension of love called discipline. There is a dimension of love called judgment. There is a dimension of love called mercy. 
there is a dimension of love called justice are we together that's why paul says to know the length the breadth and he he gives love a dimension so when we say the love of god comes to you it can come as his goodness it has, can come as his chastisement are we together it can come as his mercy now you are a believer number one we have to examine what made your prayer life to go down right there are two reasons why your prayer life can go down number one it can be the natural fatigue that comes from the spirit and the flesh contending together according to galatians chapter 5 verse 16 it says this i say then walk ye in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh right so it says the flesh lusted after the spirit the spirit after the flesh and there is a contention you get up in the morning i mean there are ladies to resist there is beer to cast away there, there are all kinds of things to happen there is bribery and corruption to run away from at the end of it after a while it's like it's like wear and tear your spirit can be fatigued that's not backsliding that's simply a tiring because of your faculties that help you interact with the spirit at that point the solution is a retreat isaiah 40 verse 31 even the young men can be weary they can faint all right then but they that wait upon the lord but in a situation where it is an attack which often happens there are three seasons where satan attacks people number one at the birthing of something new the moment there is something new about to happen in your life part of the many events that happen is a strange attack that has nothing to do with your spiritual life you read the bible and you find out it's not unusual right very very important there is always a strange attack revelations i saw a mystery a woman who was carrying a man child about to give birth to that child and a dragon came and stood waiting for the child to come so that she will eat now satan tries to stop you at the time of sowing your seeds any kind of seed spiritual seed if he cannot stop it he will try to stop the gestation period by bringing impatience taking advantage of your human nature that hope deferred makes the heart weary are we together now and if you cannot stop it then he will wait for you at the point of harvest so that he will abort the harvest these are the three seasons and stages of satan's attack so before you start ministry look at that he did it to moses stage one when moses was about to be birthed and conceived they wanted to kill all the people so to abort the destiny from day one now that it did not happen he wanted to implicate moses and he caused moses to kill somebody so that it will affect him the process and then eventually towards the end of his life he used anger and stopped him from entering so there are three stages of satan's attack are we together we see that even in the life of jesus jesus about to be born his star shines in the east wise men follow him herod wants to kill him are we together then later on again we see that through the process after his baptism satan comes to wait for him and then he tries to jeopardize his destiny by telling him i'll give you the kingdom bow down and since he refused and then he tried and tried and tried all through the lifetime of jesus satan could not get him and then the last stage was in hell when jesus was preparing to defeat all the cohorts of hell and come out all the demons and the principalities were on him to force him to bow and then he rose up and you know that when jesus was about to resurrect what happened they paid some people to lie even when he resurrected he, they guarded the place and when he resurrected they paid some people they said go and lie that the disciples came and stole his body so we see that there are seasons you can actually discern seasons where you know you are liable to attacks except you do not have spiritual intelligence now satan i'm using this are, are we getting blessed is god speaking to us satan is not omniscient there are three attributes that make god sovereign number one is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere satan is not everywhere job 1 verse 1 from whence comest thou later on you read from running to and fro god doesn't run to and fro his eyes can see everything the all-seeing eyes of god are we together now number two his omniscience his ability to know all things 
Satan does not know all things. He works with informations. That's why he uses human agents to probe into people. That's why Satan pursued prophets. Because he wanted to hear what God was telling them. Are we together now? Very important. And then number three, his omnipotence. His ability to have all power. Once have I spoken, twice have we heard that all power belongs to the Lord. Now, Satan does not have these attributes. Are we together? So, Satan can discern seasons of breakthrough in your life. And that season is usually communicated in the spirit by unusual angelic activities. Satan was once a cherub. And so he understands. Remember when Jacob slept, right? When you read Genesis 28, when Jacob slept, he saw a ladder. There were unusual activities happening. Are we together now? The same thing Jesus told Nathaniel in John chapter 1. He said, you will see many things. You see the heavens open and all of that. So what happens is that at a point where the devil sees that there are unusual activities or prophecy has revealed what God is about to do. That's why when prophecy comes, that's not the time to cross your leg. Paul spoke to his son Timothy. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you war a good warfare with the prophecies. Because prophecy is an announcement. It's an unveiling. The moment the voice of God prophetically spoke, John said, behold the lamb. And a voice said, this is my beloved son. Satan started chasing him. Are we together now? So when there is an attack, it usually is that God is, is trying to do something in your life and Satan is trying to raise a counter-attack. At that point, if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, there is a secret to tap into a higher supply of grace. Are you following me now? And that's the power of a retreat. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. They that wait. The moment you sense that there is a lot of boisterous activities in your life, and you will know it by the intuition of the spirit some of you will see it in dreams some of you will have it in visions some of you prophecies will come to you and many of us who are used to rejecting prophecy now prophecy must not be exalted above the word of god however it's important to many times pay attention to it especially when it's coming from vessels that know god and are credible it's important to pay attention praise the lord very very important so when there is an attack and it is a demonic attack if it prevails over you an attack is inevitable on the saints and it's not a surprising thing the surprise however is when satan prevails are we together now because even in heaven there was war the bible said there was war in heaven that that dragon lucifer he rose and archangel michael also rose but satan prevailed not there was no place found for him and he was casted to the earth. And there was a lamentation. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. You know, Satan, that old serpent, he has come with anger and great fury. Are we together now? So if there is an attack, an affliction, the secret is prayer. And it's in a secret place. So if your prayer life died, it's because you did not build momentum before that time. Are we together? That's the reason why it is important for every believer to have what we call, it's like a spiritual bank. It's like an energy bank. So your daily prayer, the Bible says redeeming the time. That's the mystery. There are two words that are used time in the Greek. There is chronos and there is kairos. Chronos is the passage of time. Kairos is an opportune time or a set time. The Bible uses these two words in the book of Psalms. It said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time, chronos, to favor her. Yea, the kairos, when you translate it to Hebrew, the set time. Are we together now? So, there is a set time, an opportune time, where major things happen between heaven. There is serious business between you and heaven. And at that time, the devil knows and he will launch attacks. So what you do is you build a spiritual fortification, both spiritual intelligence and capacity in the place of prayer, so that at such time, it will sustain you. The Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, what was wrong? Your strength, your spiritual strength now is small. So if you fell in that attack, it's because your strength was small. Are we together? Let's assume, let's use something, maybe pornography. Are we together now? 
and it's something God had delivered you from and you sense that the devil is trying to drive you again into porn, uh, pornography are we together now and then you fell to it that falling is not a test that falling is not the furnace of affliction we're talking about that you fell simply because your spirit did not sustain the strength and the energy to scale through but then in the midst of it the dimension of god's love called mercy comes in so don't confuse it that because you learn more from that situation it means it was god that orchestrated it god simply took advantage of it and allowed his mercy to prevail so that in your rising you will now rise better stronger and more anointed this is what makes god love are you getting it now but that does not mean god intended for you to necessarily fall the falling is simply the limitation of your spirit man i don't know if you understand what i'm saying yes sorry and uh, this is there are many people if yeah. you ask two two questions please if you come out after two questions you go and sit down and hope that somebody will ask your question are we together yeah um, this has been happening I will see some things. I will, I will not know how to inquire for the meaning. And when it happens later, sometimes they are not good. At times, it posi it's positive. You will what? Sorry. See, for instance. You will see yeah, things, yeah, visions yeah. now. Yes. Now, like, there was a time I saw myself traveling with a lady. And when it came, I didn't understand what it meant. When it came. You were traveling to, with a lady? Uh, to, to a, a vision. To a place, yes. When it to came. Where? To a place. I didn't know we were going okay, to a place. Okay, No so location. The, okay. the reality was that the person was under attack and I was the one to lead her to the prayer place. I'm, uh, in and that, that oh, was you where, held her and you were taking her yeah, to a place. Okay. That's where she got her. This thing, but I didn't understand the meaning then. Now, recently, I saw a, a lady, my cosmate, um, pick a bag and was traveling. I didn't know what it meant. The next day, uh, she actually told me she was, tra she was traveling to a place. I said, what for? She said, somebody just died there. Now, I understood that uh, maybe if we, were, if we had prayed, about the journey and all of that, if it was a bad one. So, how does one, my question is, how would one be, uh, how would one know the meaning of the pictures you are seeing at the time of the vision to help your direction in prayers? Okay, God bless you. Now, there are two things here that I will attempt to respond to. I, I don't know if we understand his question, but um, after this, we'll take three people from outside before we continue. So, protocol help us. We'll get the three people from outside who have questions. Please, you see how time is going. If you come and you ask a question that doesn't make sense, we have agreed as a congregation that we are sending you back. Please, we intend to grow and we want to redeem the time. Are we together? So please, before you come, make sure you are prepared not to disgrace yourself. Are we together? Ask questions. Seek counsel with your neighbor whether your question is constructive enough. Yes, yes, please. Please, so that you don't, you don't come out here and, and waste our time. But the gentleman was saying something that I consider to be important. Now, I think the biggest error in the prophetic is lack of spiritual growth to contend for accurate interpretation. The problem with the prophetic or visionary encounters usually, three of us can see the same thing in the spirit, but it does not mean the same for all three of us. Are we together? Now, that's the problem I have with books that say, if you see a chain, it means oppression. What if it's a chain watch? that I saw what if it's a, a necklace to mean an ornament of royalty you can't just say I saw a chain it means I'm under attack I, I remember a lady years ago who was pressing into God and when she got to that dimension she she a, another lady had a dream about her and saw her naked and came and met her and started lambasting her and say you are walking in immorality what kind of nonsense life is this you are giving us an impression like you are serious with god now your secret has been revealed and the lady was depressed and she came and met me that that nakedness was a message in the spirit that she was becoming intimate with the spirit but it was wrongly interpreted three of us can see a finger in the spirit for one, it means warning. Stop what you are doing. For another man, one, it means direction. Come up here. Are we together? For another, it means I am blessing the works of your hands. We all saw the same thing. So it is wrong. Remember in the interpretation of the dream of, of, of Joseph and the wine presser and baker, all of them saw three, three things. Three baskets, three this. He interpreted for the first one and he was happy. Then the other one said, me too, I have my own. He said, in three days, they will hang you. 
and this is established and they hung him after three days are we together so stop going around with predefined prophetic interpretations you only make certain prophetic interpretations predefined if the character of their operation has been established in the world for instance anywhere you see a dove is a representation of the manifestation of the holy spirit anywhere it's a spiritual symbol that the spirit of god has associated himself with except if you see a dove and you see it oscillating that's a that's deception for instance because according to the scriptures the enemy can parade himself as an angel of light are we together now so it is true that there are certain default symbols that help us communicate with visionary encounters but not just that you see you can see a woman in the spirit you can see yourself moving with a woman and you may think that god is punishing you from lo or lost a woman in the spirit is a gate that woman you are seeing could be that you are entering a new season are you seeing now but because you do not sustain that spiritual intelligence you go around casting something you should be prophesying to come and all of that so i think um for the gentleman i think i've been able to help him i i hope that i got his question correctly if i didn't i'm, I'm so sorry praise god yes my praise dear. god permit me to say this that first that is an honor to finally meeting you after listening to your message for a very long time god bless you thank you <laughs> thank you i <laughs> i'm very thank happy you. i'm here tonight You're my welcome. question is to bawash it too. the first question is what do you do as a person when you're struggling with spiritual growth? Today you are hope, tomorrow spiritual you are Spiritual growth. Uh, does Watch. it mean that um, it's like a graph that you'll be going zigzag, zigzag till you get to that final slope? Uh, or okay. is it that you question just stop? Two. The second question is, you're talking about dream and vision. In my lodge, we had a case where someone said he had a dream, blah, 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 blah. And it really caused a big advocate in my lodge. Look at the congregation. Okay. It's, it really caused a big advocate in my lodge. I'm asking the question that does he had a dream about the lodge or something? About the sister that the sister came to seduce him, blah, blah, blah. And everybody was now calling the sister a witch. That adds, does it mean that all dreams come from God? Okay. When we see dreams, does it mean that everything is, we see, it is coming from God? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, my dear. Um, her first question was sometimes they should not go immediately so that they can remind me in case I've lost um, I'm interpreting them with my spirit so my mind is hardly here um, her first question was what up up and down okay okay listen 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 please what does the Bible say the path of the just is like a shining light that does what shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day now there is a difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding i think i've, I've cleared i've cleared that all right for as long as you are wearing this body the limitations of carrying up mortality right the concept of immortality is a concept that is accessible but immortality is not an impartation immortality is the resultant effect of accessing light from the spirit because the bible says as we behold him we are changed now the problem usually is that our lifetime and our level of regeneration is so slow that our lifetime will not be able to help us change that fast that's why we die are we together now but it is possible that a man can contend for that dimension enoch did it elijah did it so we know that it's possible to live bodily although in a glorified form out of this earth moses didn't do it um and all of that but at least we have two witnesses two evidences in the bible that they were able to access that so when you find yourself see and, and this is her question is very instrumental to your spiritual health if you are sick and you don't know how many of you have seen people in the village who are sick they don't even know to them they are healthy you just test them and say mr man you have malaria plus plus and yet the person is playing football you not now tell the person go to the hospital that's how many people are spiritually and for me your spiritual life is tested based on your passion for god there are certain things that start happening in your life that you know there is danger number one your prayer life your when your prayer life is is nose diving don't ever pretend that is a dimension of growth you are backsliding 
immediately once your prayer life is going down don't let satan fool you and say you are just in a season where uh, god doesn't want you to say anything or this and that and that be very careful because it could be deception to destroy you your spiritual life number two your passion for the word number three your passion for the house of god number four i want to call it your your sense of morality is important if all of a sudden i sit down and i find out that i start lusting after you call me apostle call me whatever i'm lusting after you i came for koinonia i saw you abel is preaching cain is there disturbing his mind what do you think i'll do it would be stupid for me to wear suit again and come back i'll use the week to flog out that element of the flesh that is growing many of us ignore those promptings until it grows to a point where it backfires obviously that's when we start crashing in the moment see the bible says let sin have no place don't give the devil a foothold the moment you find out that there is a place there is there are certain things you are bending on your values you don't pray for three days or four days you feel all right very very all right you carry your bible and there is no zeal to read sometimes it could be in the presence of god you'll be able to find out whether it's spiritual fatigue or it is backsliding are we together but ultimately the difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding is that under spiritual fatigue your passion is still there it's just the zeal and the strength to press through that is not there but under backsliding your zeal and your passion dies are, are we together now for the our brother that saw a vision that a lady is seducing him um that's that's wrong you see this, this is the problem we have when we live in christian communities because people wake up with all kinds of things i spoke to you about interpretation this brother may be a sincere person maybe he's here we are not creating fight are, are we together you don't know whether he followed you for koinonia you said he's in your lodge now the point is this it is wrong you see prophecy and in the realm of and the realm of the spirit also depends on your mental renewal for correct interpretation are we together i can guarantee you that this brother's spiritual paradigm fundamentally is faulty for him to see an innocent lady and call her a witch to say is he the only person in the lodge you'll be surprised it's not even maybe the most handsome or something so um it's, it's a wrong paradigm now you point do you know another thing? It is possible that I can go to bed and see Shalhoma chasing me, maybe with a stick in a dream. Are we together now? And all of a sudden, I wake up and I say, I saw Shalhoma chasing me. And it's welfare that cooks for me. I put two and two together and I say, my life is under, I'm in danger. I mean, and then I now dissolve koinonia welfare because they are trying to destroy apostle joshua selman some of you you have that paradigm now it can happen a possibility exists that such kinds of things happen i mean in the house of god there are all kinds of things but then i'm saying that your interpretation primarily should not be that because he saw a lady if he does not understand seek counsel there are there are spiritual puzzles that we put together you must let scripture interpret your encounters are we together now i mean in the bible women seduce men what was the progression of the seduction samson was seduced are we together who again was seduced in the bible huh job was not seduced who? joseph was seduced you some of you are saying job look at how your poor but please how about this is koinonia don't were bible people How, job was never seduced the only woman with him was his wife please don't go and say that anywhere it's very bad are, are we together now my dear so that 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 teaching even if it was true this is what i would have done if i had a dream and you pursue me or you are trying to sleep with me or something in a dream right even if it was your face it's wrong to get up and call you a witch do you know because you don't know what spiritual challenges he's facing you now get up and you now call her a witch three situations would help to interpret that number one it could be that there is a spiritual operation around your life and your family 
that birds seduction it can be true are we together that you as a person you are not bad but it's possible that you are being influenced by the spirit of lust or because of the background you are coming from and so it will happen in the similitude of your face disturbing that person are we together now and so you will feel bad number two it can be the spirit of confusion the devil masquerading to now cause confusion are we together so he will now use your face just like you saw your father quarreling you you saw your mother caught beating you you just got up and said your mother is a witch anybody whether my father my mother the, the woman is innocent you find out that we keep calling people witches and wizards who have no business with witchcraft however 80 percent of them are being influenced by spirits that operate in the character of what they were accused of you see that so um whoever he called a witch i can guarantee you is not a witch please she left her father's house to also come and do nyc she's not a witch she may not be spiritually strong and all of that but she's not a witch it may be wrong so go and comfort her the brother what he saw when you have encounters you are not guaranteed to have interpretation for them but one thing you can do is blast in tongues sufficiently until your spirit man gives you a note of peace at that point you know that whatever is the issue whether calling it forth or driving it away it has been settled it is for that cause the spirit of god makes intercession for us i cannot tell you that every encounter i've had i've had interpretation for in fact some of them may be years in the future as i grow spiritually or i have other encounters that piece them up together i now see the message but in the interim every time you wake up from an encounter praying in the spirit is the way forward and you pray until there is that check in your spirit that whatever it is it's been settled you understand so that's what you should do god bless you and increase you eh? okay Please, straight sir. to the point um we have okay let's have one or two more people two more people please if you are sure your question is really going to bless us we have a little time and do, please and please don't ask anything here that will waste our time are we together the gentleman uh, if your questions will be fast i can listen to it and combine it that gentleman there's a lady in the background you sister the one waving your hands come um have we had anybody outside okay there's one person outside okay one usher come you're a worker we love you come okay so quickly good evening sir How are so you? a process whereby don't look at me as you're saying it, look at the congregation praise the lord praise the lord yes in the process whereby someone is suffering from the lust of the flesh lust of the flesh yes. example what is loss of the flesh for Immorality. example masturbation okay or lesbianism and you are praying praying tongues pray you are in the presence of prayers and you are still having the feelings in the presence of praying oh you are still struggling and struggling you are trying to pray the spirit is just trying and trying so sir what do you what's do? the way forward god bless you thank you he's been very sincere look let me tell you the truth the goal of this question and answer session is to help us grow spiritually there's nothing embarrassing about it praise god there are people like that in fact i've seen people who are suffering from immorality or lust, and they're on three days dry on the third day before they break with food are we together now the devil does some kind of things positions the same lady they used to sleep with and it happens again or internet pornography or whatever we've seen these kinds of cases so um do you know what deliverance is deliverance is not just coughing out things and rolling around and pushing chairs and bringing people here deliverance is the spiritual mechanism with which a man is separated from a spirit or an influence over his life are we together now there are three dimensions or three levels that access satan in a man's life number one is called covenants covenants it is usually the strongest of the three number two is disobedience or ignorance number two is ignorance then number three is disobedience now the danger of covenant and ties is that your personal salvation does not take away the covenant that is in a territory are we together now that is the reason why someone can be born again there are still corrupt people in nigeria but are you corrupt 
No. Are we together now? Nigeria is termed a corrupt nation. Yet there are righteous people who are true. Are we together now? The earth is the Lord's. Yet they are still bombing children and disturbing people. So there are covenants. A covenant is a legal agreement between spirit entities and human beings or fellow human beings. Right? That either opens up access for good or of evil. Covenants have consequences. Right? They can, they can, they can transcend generations. So this is very important. That's why you find out that the classic sign of covenants is that there must be a pattern to it. The moment there is a covenant involved in any process, there is a pattern. If these three guys are brothers and you find out that Michael is very rich, Kenny is very rich, Promise is very rich, you see that pattern. There is a covenant that grants that access. Promise, very poor. Kenny, very poor. Michael, struggling. There is also a pattern. So, patterns are usually communications that the access point for the realm of the spirit in that situation is a covenant. So, you find out that a father is an armed robber. When he stole, his son did not know. Many years later, the son will also come and steal. Have you seen people like that? The same pattern that happened to their parents repeats themselves. Because the patterns are a spiritual formula. There is an enchantment like a spell that makes it happen. I know a lady who, who I, I, I think um, um, she got pregnant and the person who got her pregnant, I think was a man of God. Same thing happened to her mother. Same thing happened to her grandmother. One reverend in their village got the grandmother pregnant. Many years later, one, one evangelist or something got the mother pregnant. And then now one brother in a fellowship gets the lady pregnant. Now, that brother does not know the reverend that got uh, uh, um, grandma pregnant that time when she was young. But then the truth remains that there is a pattern. Are, are we together? Are you getting it now? And I know that sometimes many of us are preached into believing they don't exist. And we try to explain them away. But the truth is, it's there. It can be dealt with. Potentially, the birth of Jesus gives us access to victory in this thing. But there is the experience of establishing that victory. Are we together? Number two is ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance grants access to demon spirits. They manipulate on the ignorance of men and open them up to certain tragic manifestations. Then number three is disobedience. You know it, but your capacity to walk thereof in that obedience is not there. So these are the three access points. So if you find out that you are praying, praying, and fasting about the issue of lust or immorality or any entanglement, and it's repeating itself. You need help. That's the reason why God puts um, gifts to the body. To be able to help. Right? Remember our teaching for this course. Many are weak. Many are sick. And many do sleep. God has elected certain people in the body of Christ. And created platforms that can be able to help people deal with these things. That's why we organize miracle services. That's why we organize um, um, all kinds of meetings. That's why when we come to God's presence like this, we take our time to soak in the glory so that the presence and the power of God can come and then address some of these things. So for that brother, you may need help. Seek help. Look for an anointed man of God, not just a counselor, somebody with an anointing that has been demonstrated to produce results and it can help you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. My name is Luke. My name is Luke. It's talking about the presence of God. Okay. Uh, I heard of your message you preach about doers of the world. Okay. And uh, you mentioned, I forgot the man name, but you say pursue of, of the presence. When we pursue, how do one pursue the presence of God? And how do we abide in that presence of God? Like in Psalm 91 verse 1, when it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Sometimes I may get interpretation of that verse, but sometimes the interpretation does not suit me. So I'm asking, that how do one what, do, what are the criteria for one to dwell in the presence of God and remain constant in the presence of God? Okay. There are parameters. Number one, you must consistently create an atmosphere. You see, I preached a message years ago called lo the law of atmosphere. Everything thrives based on the atmosphere created. The presence of God requires an atmosphere. The presence of God is invoked, just like you invoke spirits. There is an atmosphere that allows the presence of God to be made manifest. Are we together now? 
Worship is one key that opens up the presence of God. Your passion, your love towards God. In other words, you're prioritizing him. Making him your one and only and ultimate is one way to get the presence of God. Obedience in scripture. He that keepeth my commands, John um, um, 16, 21, I think I'm right. Or 1421. He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loves me. And I will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. So the love of God is very, very important. Yes, my dear. Praise God. I'm precious, Moses. Um, I want to ask, uh, um, there's this friend of mine that I was preaching to. And um, she was telling me that there's no heaven, that we are going to stay here. There's no there's, heaven. Yes, and there's no hell. Uh, okay. So, now we're getting into I've, denominational. And, okay. Um, she was not, I was not telling her there is the no story heaven. of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. I now asked her that, okay, where did Lazarus went to and where was the rich man? Then she asked me to open to Revelation 21 verse 1. And after much argument, she was now asking me that. In Revelation 21, she said, and I saw a new heaven and a coming new down in here. And you know, she was now asking me that, okay, where is that new heaven? And the new earth. And I didn't know what to really tell. I just kept quiet. I was confused in that aspect. God bless you. Um, I don't know if it's the millennial reign of Christ. or. I understand. I don't really. You see, we labor day and night. Uh, contributing our quota to help believers become matured. Are we together? You make people become matured by giving them understanding. Now, before I answer, I, I don't mean in any way, I know that there are different denominations, different Christian sects with their understandings about heaven and all of that. And um, I'm not giving you a denominational opinion. Are we together now? There are many instances in scripture that lets us know that there is heaven. Are we together now? Very, very important. I, I think that... Um, it doesn't make sense to begin to make all those arguments. Genesis 1 verse 1. The very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created what? And the earth. Now, I think that alone answers. First verse, first chapter in the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created. So, don't say where is it. Created, God created the heavens. And notice he never said the heaven. Heavens different planes. Paul himself gave us an example. He said he was caught up to the third heaven. That means there are other dimensions. The psalmist said the heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord. So we know that there are different planes, but there is heaven. Hallelujah. Are we together now? The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Not just the sky. Are we together now? Acts chapter 1 when Jesus was about to be taken, when he lifted to heaven, two angels appeared and told the people, men and brethren, why look ye? You know, this and that and that. He said, this same Jesus. Is it not the Acts chapter 1? Let's use it to answer. At least let's use the words of Jesus. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus is going to heaven now. And he's speaking to us. Or the angels are responding. Acts chapter 1. I, I don't want to quote it wrongly. Verse, verse 10. verse 10 i know that when you read from verse 9 let's start from verse 9 it gives us an impression like he just vanished he did not just vanish a cloud received him a cloud received him and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight verse 10 please quickly and while they looked steadfastly towards where heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel verse verse 11 which he also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same jesus which is taken up from you into where into where so we know that heaven is the habitation the heaven of heavens is where jesus himself lives there is a place a spiritual location called heaven it says, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where? Heaven. 
are we together so that issue of saying um, there is no heaven is not true please the bible does not negate that the fact that there is heaven the bible clearly tells us in many instances old and new testament that there is heaven jesus himself i want to give you the ultimate proof now jesus himself made us to know that there is heaven in matthew chapter 6 when he was teaching us how to pray he said our father who art where he didn't say our father who art around our father who art in an exact location heaven from that point we hallow your name your kingdom come so please let's rest this issue once and for all there is a real place called heaven and and um, there are people there right now are we together and we hope that one day we'll join them now what we need to explain is the fact that the bible says the old heaven and the old earth will be rolled away like a curtain and then a new heaven and a new earth will come it is true that that very habitation of god will eventually be transported back to this realm but it won't be in the similitude of these three dimensions so it's not like we're going to have another three-dimensional realm no there will be another atmosphere that comes to occupy this space this is the sovereignty of god this is part of the mysteries of the kingdom where this old heaven and old earth will be rolled away to frankly speaking we don't know the bible does not reveal that uh, this is part of the information that is contained in the age to come are we together now that's why there are ages to come that carry certain informations that are important for the saints so there is heaven my dear and every time you preach to people and they argue with you don't turn your evangelism into debate politely decline you may look foolish don't say no i can't let this go like this let it go like that so that god will be glorified yes my dear praise the lord my name is Christiana Kadri. Thank you. My question is, uh, like somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a man of God, and you have been waiting. <laughs> okay. Many ladies are happy. Okay, let, let's get the question, please. And Someone prophesied to you. And nobody... And said you'll marry a pastor, yes. and you have been waiting. And the person has been waiting because... One miracle service, I saw you, sir. You prophesied to one lady that she's going to marry a pastor. And one day again, I'm listening to one man of God. He was saying, anybody that prophesied, if he's a man of God, that the thing did not happen, continue waiting. Even when you die waiting, continue waiting. So, I'm asking that. So, when somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a pastor, and the pastor is not coming, you continue waiting. What okay. to do? That's a very good question, I think. We can use it it's not just prophesying about marriage it could be about anything praise the lord now um i i understand what she's saying and she's communicating probably the pain of a lot of people because over time women of god have spoken to people and there are times that for others the prophecy have even come with precise detail you are going to marry a man called uh, ebenezer he's in media department the day you will see him is wearing a white cloth, dark trouser, he's holding a camera. If he snaps you, just know. <laughs> now, come Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer. Come now, Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer, you now come for koinonia. And Ebenezer is just snapping around and focuses on you. And your heart is beating. It's true. Ebenezer snaps you and goes to marry somebody else are we together now and now you are waiting and you are frustrated now there are three things here i want to explain i know we have all laughed but let's listen closely now the bible says that even the ministration of the gifts must be done according to the measure of grace are we together two of us can be prophets but the grace the access to authority and strength the spiritual ranking that authorizes us in the dispensing is like you have two doctors one is just doing his housemanship another one is doing another one is a consultant they are all called doctors but are they the same they are not the same at all are we together now this is how it is spiritually so when we when there is the ministration of the word 
Notice sometimes when you see me wanting to talk to people, I call people out by the Spirit and I just keep quiet. Because of what the Lord is communicating to me, sometimes it's like a feedback mechanism. I'm checking in my spirit to make sure that this is not an interplay of the flesh. And to also make sure if God wants me to reveal it to them. Sometimes you see me and I talk to people. I take away the mic because the information is very sensitive and may, is something that can be embarrassing. Are we together now? But let me tell you sincerely. Let me tell you this sincerely. One thing I know about marriage, and we have discussed that, make reference to my message, um, challenging discussions on late marriage. I think we touched that area where the issue of God said overrides the word of God. The Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 1, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets has in this last day spoken to us through his son which he has appointed to be heir over all things and we know that that son is the living logos the word of god and so whether it is joshua selman i'm not telling you to doubt the word by the grace of god we press into the word of god to make sure that we bring accurate words and there is a track record you can follow up the things that have been prophesied over people some of them have come to pass some of them are already on the way praise the lord now um no matter what it is if a man of god gives you a prophetic word and after a season you do not for instance let's use marriage i prophesy to this lady now and i tell her a pastor is coming and michael comes to her and let's assume michael is just a businessman you know that the natural tendency is for her to drive him away and say please you are not a pastor um he may be a pastor when he marries her God didn't lie. Are we together? But sometimes it can also be that there is need for a check. In fact, sincerely speaking, let me tell you, it is very, it is very praiseworthy to go back to God again. We have seen instances in the Bible where God spoke and under certain circumstances he had to speak new things again. Are we together? An example is Isaiah 38 when he spoke to Isaiah to speak to Hezekiah. Remember that scripture? He came and told him, Hezekiah, put your house in order. You will not recover from this sickness. You are going to die. Are we Bible students? So when I, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and invoked the mercy of God, God sent Isaiah again. Are we together? To go back. So there is a possibility. It's not a doctrine. But through scripture, we see that there is a possibility. Um, the alignment of man can make God say new things. I'll give you an instance. If this lady is your wife, I wish um, example, example. If this lady is your wife, I'm not showing you your wife. If this lady is your wife, of, of course, let me just put a, a little word of blessing. We are proud of our ladies. And if I say it and God is, 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 is directing you there, there's nothing wrong. Ladies, you should give me a happy meal tomorrow. <laughs> Are we together? But now this is the example. If this is your wife, truly, truly, and she says, I'm not doing, do you think God is going to yoke you and tell you you will not marry any, anybody again because of her carelessness and disobedience? Are we together now? God will not put you to ransom. The same way if God calls you into ministry and you say no, will he force you? Will he kill you? The same way he, he tells you that you should surrender all to him. When you refuse, he will not force you. There's hellfire already to settle that issue. So he will not force you. Please, I want us to understand that the plans of God can change. It's his purposes that are eternal. This is a revelation that would deliver many of us right now. The plans of God can change. God planned that you fly Ari to Lagos. And something happens. God will tell you to enter if it's in a cheap transport. The plans have changed. But the destination is still Lagos. But when you sit down and say it must be Ari or it must be flight. Are we together now? In scripture again and again. For instance, do you know it was never God's desire for men to have earthly kings rule over them? 
when you read in the Bible, it was his desire that he remains their king. But the people out of anger and rebellion, they say, give us a king. And God had to make prophet Samuel to go and anoint Saul, the son of Kish, to become a king. Are we together now? Yes. It was never even God's desire. Listen, it was never God's desire for David, for the tribe of David to be the lineage with which Jesus will come. It was supposed to be Saul. Are we together? But Saul made a costly mistake that costed him that opportunity. Remember when he went and he was off, um, giving the offering by himself. They asked him to wait for the coming of the prophet. But he could not wait because the people were murmuring. And being a king, he was not a priest. Are we together? Because in ancient times, there were kings, priests, and prophets. They operated in different dimensions. Occasionally, the priests were also the prophets, like we have in the case of Samuel. He was both a priest and a prophet. Are we together now? And so in that incidence, um, Saul now started, he made sacrifices. And while he finished, Samuel just came. And Samuel told him, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had waited for me to come and offer the sacrifice, God would have established your throne forever. So it would not be the lion of the tribe of, or, or the, the root of David. It would now be the root of Saul. Again, we see that the first person God called in the Bible was not Abraham. The first person God called in the Bible was his father, Terah. Terah was tired and he said, I'm not doing. And then God looked for Abraham. Are we together now? So that's very, very important. I think that um, we need to understand this. My, my dear, if, even if it's me that prophesied to you and you are tired, come and meet me. Come for counseling and say, let's, let's hear God. Let's pray about this issue again. Especially where there is a God-fearing, very serious and responsible brother who is ready to marry and is coming around you. You are hanging the person while waiting for the pastor to see if the pastor will come or not. Don't dilly dial. Find the man of God. If the person who prophesied to you is still within reach, find him. If you discern pride and arrogance in him that he's embarrassed to recheck whether his hearing was correct, go and look for another man of God to speak to you. Are we together now? I know there's a lady who came one time, I think from Port Harcourt, coming to confirm because a man of God described somebody, a fair person, and she had been waiting. And there was somebody who really loved God. When she came, I prayed for her and I said, I, I wish you a happy married life. And they are married now, happily married to the glory of God. She would have been waiting forever for, for a, a yellow person to appear. So, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, all these questions we have attempted reveal three things. Number one, it is costly. To be ignorant over spiritual things are we together it is costly just a little question and answer session but it has exposed us to a lot of things it is costly i trust that with this little question and answer session it has activated our appetite for more of god you see if you do not understand scripture you will be deceived in many ways you notice that every question i attempt to answer i show you a scripture to support it because you cannot afford to answer questions with opinions. And you will not know God's opinion if you don't study. Study. Study to show yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Praise the Lord. Psalms 82 from verse 5 says, They know not neither will they understand he said they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course so it is important for us to be good students of the word not religiously studying it but studying it with everything that we have hallelujah number two corporate fellowship is very important it's part of the principles and the requirement for your spiritual growth you can see that a platform like this has afforded us an opportunity to know more and to learn a few things to strengthen our spiritual life. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that comes from the head of Aaron, right? Down to his bird and to his cat and all of that. He said, dear, God had commanded the blessing. 
so it's very important corporate fellowship is important for our spiritual strengthening hallelujah and then number three ultimately it reveals to us the necessity of the person of the holy spirit worship team sang the song beautifully we're going to sing that song again and and then we'll sing that song that came i can't even remember what we sang but try to remember it worship team we'll sing those two songs again very beautifully the holy spirit this place is called koinonia is our intimacy with him and our partnership with him that affords us the opportunity to access light and access his wisdom the bible says ride prosperously because of truth right you will only prevail by the truth you know not the truth that is available the truth you know it can be available but if you do not know it you will still die there are still people going to hell whereas the price for our sin has been paid for hallelujah i love the scriptures luke chapter 8 verse 22 now it came to pass on a certain day listen that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them let us go over to the other side of the lake and they launched forth uh-huh let's continue but as they sailed remember it was vision that brought this trouble if they were not moving forward there would be no need for a storm sometimes a storm does not mean you are wrong it could mean you are right they were on their way to the other side sometimes not having a storm does not mean you are all right there are times that it means you are not doing anything you are not moving they were on their way to the other side and then the bible says that a storm arose but as they sailed he jesus now fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and they were in jeopardy 24 and they came to him and awoke him saying master master another version says cares not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was calm leave it there leave that scripture there <laughs> look up a storm is made of two things number one wind number two water every storm is made of wind and water the bible says to calm the storm jesus dealt with two things he dealt with the wind and he dealt with the water that a storm does not just happen until these elements are present the wind and the water the wind in scripture always talks about the spiritual input the realm of the spirit all through consistent from genesis 1 breathing upon them the breath of god ezekiel 37 are we together right everywhere the bible talks about wind it has to do with the spiritual dimension of anything and then number two the bible talks of water water in scripture especially with this kind of reference refers to men multitudes the voice of god is mighty upon the waters so the bible says you have no business having a storm until there is wind and water there has to be a spiritual dimension for every storm to be called a storm and then there must be human factors that can work in partnership with the realm of the spirit to make a storm real so jesus is on his way going we see that there are spirit we know that this is true because as soon as he gets to gadara we see a man and we see spirits so this condition was fulfilled are we together now that a storm cannot be a storm until there is wind and water jesus gets up and with this intelligence he knows what to rebuke the bible says look at the bible says he rebuked the wind one side and then the raging of the water was it not the man in gadara who was raging with anger are we together now the bible says they would bind that man and put him in grave and i mean at rocks and he would break the chains he came to jesus and said what is all this 
you have come to destroy us do not torment us and Jesus rebukes the spirit Jesus corrects that man and when you read down here the Bible says he came and met the man in his right mind in his right senses so that means that every time humans go through storms it's a combination of two things one the physical body the situation that looks obvious but that in the realm of the spirit there is a wind that gives that water life that the water does not move on its own it is sponsored by an agency that the family problem is more than just two people are we together now that the financial storm is not just about money naira and kobo every storm is made of wind and water jesus did not only rebuke the wind the bible says he rebuked the raging of the water and the bible said they like two living things ceased and there was calm jesus is teaching us how to calm storms that every time there is a storm number one know that it only comes because you are moving forward let us go to the other side you know we have this mindset that every time storms come sometimes they mean you are wrong it may mean you are right Jesus never said, let us go back. He did something about that situation. There are times that going back is not an option. You have the power to calm the storm. And that the first thing he did, just to encourage someone, that the first thing Jesus did was to rebuke the wind in that order. Because according to James 2 and verse 26, a spirit without a body is dead. Behind every body, there is a spirit component to it. Behind every situation as a body, there is a spirit component to it. So he rebukes the spirit. This is the same thing Jesus did also. When you read the 12th chapter of Luke, the Bible lets us know that one time um, he met a woman who had been stuck for 18 years, he said. And he said, woman, Thou art loosed from your infirmity. And then when the woman was loosed, he now laid hands on her and straightened her. And said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, ought not this woman, she shouldn't be in this condition as a daughter of Abraham. There are storms that continue to rage. When God showed me that vision, I knew exactly what he was saying. There are many people who will focus on what is obvious. The financial issue. The marital issue. The career issue. You are just looking at the water. The raging of the water. But that the water in itself has a wind behind it. There is a spirit that is sponsoring that family catastrophe. There is a spirit. Listen very carefully. This our generation that continues to ignore the reality of the spirit realm it's amazing how we try to ignore we find a way of convincing ourselves that there are no spirit influences in the world of men and if any is just mind no there are real spirits they are alive they influence people's finances they influence marriages they influence ministries. They influence results. Every time Jesus was going to handle issues, he dealt with the spiritual dimension first. And then he corrected the physical dimension. Are we together? That means adjusting things from the physical is a total waste of time. There are people who the solution to their problem is not counseling. The guy is not a thief as a habit. He's a thief as an influence. That's the reason why no matter where you hide what you hide, the spirit works like a prophetic spirit with word of knowledge. He will know where it was kept. That's not a habit. There are people like Jonah who are carrying all kinds of presents that continue to program difficulties in their lives. Even something that should be easy, when it gets to your turn, it becomes horribly difficult. It's a spirit. When there is a raging storm, that the way to deal with it is to rebuke the wind, then rebuke the water, then both of them will become. You rebuke your child, 
and you leave the wind, you are in trouble. Imagine that Jesus met the guy at Gadara and said, that's all right, no problem. Just dress well and uh, behave yourself next time when you see me. No. Legion. Legion of devils in one man. And Jesus said, go out of this man now. And they left. And then the man, imagine the man taking his bath, a sound and a sane man coming back and you look at him and say ah, yesterday you were you were not like this and the man will say yes because it was me plus other entities see i have learned by experience and by scripture the the power of victory when realities in the realm of the spirit are settled is a total waste of time i am telling you to approach things purely from a scientific point or from a sociological point. At best, it can just provide temporary succor. But if it's the result you are looking for, all realities must first be settled in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, starting says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It calls faith the evidence of things not seen. And then it says, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. The second part is my interest. It says, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear that means the physical realm does not give birth to the physical realm the physical realm is a child that comes from another dimension every good thing has an origin from the realm of the spirit every evil thing also has an origin from the realm of the spirit are we together When a woman gives birth to a child, sorry to use this analogy, the child comes out and you notice there is an umbilical cord that connects into the woman. That umbilical cord is a testimony that that child started from within. Is that true? This is the same thing. Listen carefully. Every situation you see is like a baby. When you trace carefully, you will trace the umbilical cord and it will disappear. You will have to be spiritual to know where it extends to. And some spiritual umbilical cords are long because they come from regions that are very far. Hallelujah. But what does the doctor do to have the child completely free? He cuts it off. Period. For as long as that umbilical cord is there, that connection remains. And then he cuts it off. This is exactly how it is stop approaching life just from the physical standpoint i am telling you this is a waste of time it's a waste of time i have read my bible and i have learned every flourishing ministry does not start just by an anointed man and cheers and members and keyboardists and intelligent speaking no sir it starts from the realm of the spirit there must be a testimony in the realm of the spirit that reflects in the physical the book of Job, how did it start? The Bible says, once upon a time, the writer of Job gave us the duality of realms. We were able to see things from both realms. And the Bible says the whole story did not start just on earth. That the discussion started in the realm of the spirit, in the heavenlies. And a man came and was proposing all kinds of things. Satan, going to and fro. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan testified and said, well, I came to him and I found him fortified. And he said, is it for nothing that you cover this man? While that is happening in the realm of the spirit, Job gets up in the morning and he does not know that he's one week left for his tragedy to start. He's on earth. Hmm. Imagine the night before all his children will die and all his cattle. He was still the greatest man in the east. But overnight... When the realm of the spirit finishes something, it will take only God to correct it. Whatever happens in the physical realm is just acting. Believe me.
the same way from the foundations of the earth the lamb was already slain and so it will be impossible for it not to happen in the physical realm regardless of what satan did all the manipulations are we together the bible says that god has blessed us already with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ is already done that means the the reality that these things have been established in the realm of the spirit should give us confidence that for as long as we partner with god inevitably it must find expression in the physical realm this i believe build the ministry from the realm of the spirit and watch what happens in the physical realm build the business from the realm of the spirit and what what happens in the physical realm build the children from the realm of the spirit the dedication i did for our little one here that's what they did for many people they dedicated them to idols and immediately the next week they went to america and never came to nigeria again yet their lives continue to parallel somebody in the village although they're in america why because there was an authorization that the realm of the spirit will should feel free to continue to create scenarios that draw people back we are thriving and excelling because what you see is only a reflection it has been finished already the miracle service has been finished already in the realm of the spirit the rejoicing version of you is already a reality in the realm of the spirit are you seeing that now and that's why for as long as your heart is open and your faith can connect inevitably you will see the hand of god he said who has believed our report to him that man the arm of the lord has been made manifest why do we call for these kinds of services they are not just moments to while away time there are several people outside everywhere thousands of people all around this ground and many more connecting around the world god is not stupid to gather a people some of you left this journey from maybe outside of this nation within this nation traveling risking your life to come and sit down would god be joking with you to bring you here Abba. i believe in jesus i believe in his power i believe that god can turn things around listen to me please i want to shake off unbelief from you I believe that God in a moment in a twinkling of an eye that a whole family can come and just sit in and say Lord can you turn our lives ha! do you know as a man of God I've been around this thing for a while and maybe a little while and I'm telling you myself even as a man who God has helped sometimes I am in awe and shock at the way God moves that someone can just come and sit in the presence of god my brothers and sisters and the anointing of the holy spirit comes like a drug and that's it you step up and doors open just like that it's like a dream everything you are looking for is also looking for you please hear me believe what i tell you everything you are looking for is looking for you if it has not gotten to you something stopped it i desired once and again to come to you but satan hindered us everything you are looking for is looking for you the breakthrough the lifting the anointing the new levels the increase the expansion it is god's will his testament already tells us there's no need going to pray and say is it god's will no the will of god is revealed through his word i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth and then scripture says let god be true and that every man a liar if you believe this about god then you will also know that the bible says while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen why because the things that are seen are temporal what does temporal mean 
subject to change fading but the things that are unseen are eternal that means everything that does not represent the counsel of god can change can change it's a miracle that my life of lack can change are we together now my life of living from drug to drug from death sentence to death sentence can change so the question tonight is not can god do it no 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 the ministry of jesus captured all of this he preached he taught he healed the sick listen carefully he casted out devils he made for the provisions of people that there be supplies so i know god is able to do it please don't come sitting here tonight wondering i've gone to many churches you may say i've been prayed for by several people apostle you don't know the amount of vigils let me tell you something and i submit to you respectfully every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it listen very carefully don't generalize troubles every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it the anointing is like money if you have one thousand you have money but that money can only buy to the limit of one thousand and if what you need to buy is ten thousand you are in trouble you will need to add nine of what you already have in addition to what you have to make that a possibility So then death walks in us, that life will walk in you. My assignment is to continue to grow in the anointing and to continue to grow in the revelation of the truth. Why? Because it is in that growth that more people's testimony is resident. That means the testimony that the level of grace I occupied three, four, five years could not produce. If it cannot produce that result till now, then I'm not growing. The problem is never with those who are having the challenge. You see, I continue to say this. The problem is not with members. It's not with the sick people. No! The problem is the limitation of the grace that is upon the person who is dispensing the word. It is true. Why do you call one doctor consultant and then you call another um, a resident doctor? What is the difference? They are all doctors. Is that true? Are they all doctors? I believe in the power of God. I truly believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. Number one, because the Bible allows it. Number two, because this is how men know that Jesus is Lord. Listen to me. The demonstration of the power of God in miracles, signs, and wonders. No matter who argues around it is the authorized signature sign El Shaddai this is how he walks when he moves upon the lives of people he leaves his signature there where the carcasses are they say that's where the eagles will gather please let me encourage you if you are a man of God here and you are here in this meeting please desire more than receiving a miracle desire a solid impartation of a real grace that is provable 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 no amount of poster would do the work of a real miracle no amount of handbill now i'm not being sarcastic will do the work of a real miracle a transformed life is a real miracle a healed body is a real miracle hallelujah we have come here tonight to celebrate the hand of god resting upon people resting upon families some of you are here for the first time because through the messages and through testimonies you have heard that this is what god is doing now you are seated like somebody who is ready to watch a movie and you are wondering okay is my case too big will god be able to visit me You know, reminds me of how patients talk to doctors. 
They believe that the doctor has never seen their phone. I say, doctor, you don't know the pain, eh? When I'm telling the doctor, I already know the situation. Don't just be patient. Say, don't allow me. Let me let me explain to you. Let me even try to turn and it's looking. And the man says, I was in medicine before you were born. I've met this kind of thing before. I know the solution. And sometimes the solution is funny. He can just give him a prescription. And he said, that's all. I thought I would be on admission. I said, no, no, it doesn't call for that kind of emergency. Just because you are threatened by the situation does not mean the situation is a threat. No. no. Apostle, you don't know the kind of financial trouble that is on my head that brought me here. No. It's a threat to you, but it's not a threat. Find a way of believing what I'm saying. Because it is true. The son of righteousness is here with healing in his wings yeah. the son of righteousness is here with lifting in his wings yeah. the son of Righteousness is here with speed in his wings for someone's destiny. The sun of righteousness is here with fire in his wings. The sun of righteousness is here. With healing in his wings. Listen. When the Lord called me, I told him something. I said, Lord, I know how unfair it is to gather a people and not have the power to allow your might to be revealed in them. You know, most times there are people who just act as if once the people hear the revelation of the word is all right. Uh, if they are not changed, that's okay. No. I believe in miracles. I believe in the word becoming flesh. God reaching down to people. I believe in situations changing with proofs. Proofs. Your account. Proof. Your destiny. Proof. Everything with proof. And we will continue to thrive and push through and see to it that by the grace of God Almighty that we grow to realms in the spirit where every challenge that comes is within the jurisdiction of the grace provided to provide answers. That's what God does. You come and sit down in this atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen, and you are wondering, can God step into my situation? I love Jesus with all my heart. I have read the scripture. I have seen what God can do. Can God give me a job? Can God open a door? Can God put this anointing upon my life? Can God lift the death sentence over my life? Can God bring to end this age-long captivity that has tied the family? The answer is yes. Let me repeat the answer is yes god is able before god gathers a people like this he will check first whether he has the power to do it it is based on that conclusion that he gathers a people he will call a solemn assembly and say come and experience god hallelujah praise the lord so tonight i like your faith to be fired up don't don't allow the devil to reduce you to the realm of the flesh where you are wondering how can god make a way in the wilderness there are many ways god can deliver you from the wilderness he can leave the wilderness there and carry you that's method one number two he can scatter every rock in the wilderness and make a road out of it three he can leave you there and carry the wilderness it doesn't matter how he does it the most important thing is you are separated from it look at the size of your challenge the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool footstool hallelujah it is footstool please help those here the power of god i just saw light just flashing here two people just here the power of God 
is touching them the lord straight up is visiting them and for one i'm seeing god remove something that looks like a growth around the stomach i command that growth to go now in the name of jesus there are two of them there's two i saw two lights so just this way and it's a ministry of the spirit you see two lights there is there is one something is coming out of the stomach is what i'm seeing um, i don't know what it is looking like but it's looking like a thread just coming out of the stomach lord we believe in you lord we believe in you there is a man of god here the power of god is coming on him you are a ministry you are a man of god i just saw it by the spirit let me tell you why these things happen look up please let me teach you something don't worry about the time i just want to show you something in two minutes i just fell to digress you see all you see is not all there is when god calls a man there is not only an anointing there is an office and there is a throne that defends what he represents there are certain operations of the spirit that are not only products of the anointing no there are certain operations that are legislations it is not the anointing that makes it happen there is an office in the realm of the spirit recognized accredited by god allocated for that grace and that office please listen understand what i'm teaching you so that when words come like this i'm not trying to transfer the anointing to the person to make it happen no 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 there are times that that happens try to understand what i'm teaching you there are things that are they are governmental legislations you see let me tell you there is growth in the spirit and people can grow to realms where certain privileges are given to them what was the privilege of the man with the parable of the five two and one talent he said i set thee over kingdoms what kingdoms that was the reward he got a ranking in the spirit that means i extend your dominion that these other kingdoms they also come under the influence of your speaking that means you can declare things when i started out in ministry i would not minister that way because it was not by this this grace for legislature it was just about the anointing being properly channeled but now that's not just the issue now no at that level you will not be able to minister to a crowd like this you see that so when i declare and i speak sometimes it is not just an anointed man speaking no there are speakings that come from the anointing but there are speakings that come by reason of the office that speaks the centurion said i am a man under authority authority there is a government there i am a captain i have an allocation in the army there are people who must hear me because i am under that grace that means there are things that can be called listen oh dear. if i am walking if i am walking in a restaurant and i am the manager in that restaurant now whether i can cook or not i am the manager do you understand what i'm saying and that means there are certain privileges that can happen is that true it is within my power to tell you come and sit down in that restaurant please serve him you see that i cannot cook physically but i occupy a position that has a cook under me i can make his grace work for you this is what i'm saying i'm not the one who prepared the food but there is somebody who can cook but both the cook and all of this is within the restaurant was given to my care let me tell you what this means 
please listen and, and i'm careful to say this because many young people once they get these kinds of things they usually will not understand what the man of god is saying and they will go online and start writing things that are er erroneous let me tell you this there is an office you can occupy that the grace must not be on you to reach people that means if pastor femi has a grace for prayer and you need it i can grow to a point in the spirit whereby the power of submission i me a man i can take the grace on him for prayer because it is needed and it is part of the apostolic duty to see that this guy's prayer life is on i can partner with the holy spirit and take the grace for prayer that is on him i may not have it as a person but because he needs that grace god can use me to take that grace and place it on someone it's true we remain humble before god and we thank him for the things that he continues to provide but let me tell you my brothers and my sisters men are not just men this is a revelation that is very is very difficult to understand but it's powerful when understood so when god gathers us like this god will not bring you to a place that cannot bless you no god does not work like that he will first check your problem before directing you so if he allowed you to come it is because he has checked it's like a checklist and he said no, no no the grace for your problem is here go you can go the same way you apply for admission you first check whether the course you want do they offer it just because they don't offer your course does not mean they are not a university there are times that only one university is offering a particular course and you will travel and go down there why because you want to access it this is how these things are spiritually too sometimes doesn't mean that we're the only ones doing what we're doing that would be pride and that would be untrue but let me tell you something that as god continues to engrace us then he provides a platform and an opportunity for the anointing to step i know that not many of us are sick crippled and all of that so it's difficult because you may not see visible signs immediately but the anointing comes on you and then you can go as you go you, you know what is on you by what starts to change so you're a man of god you go back ah i came to zaria it was a powerful meeting and then god leads you to certain people and for the first time you are surprised you are talking to the person and you are hearing names that you don't know you are saying okay i used to just think these things are intuition so the speakings of god can be this clear i can know it this much tonight is not only a night of deliverance tonight is not only a night of healing tonight is not only a night to calm storms tonight is a night of receiving i really believe that impartations to receive to receive you have to add to the grace that is upon your life already grace and peace be multiplied if you stay where you are you will not grow in results grace and peace be multiplied you are a prayer warrior you are the you are a leader in a group you remain at that level everybody will go and leave you there and they will not listen to you again that's the truth because they have exhausted the level of grace it's not that they don't want to love you you have to grow so take away your mind from anything that can distract and focus on god place something upon my life lord you have come put something upon my life put something upon my destiny and if you came here as a family put something oh god upon our family son of righteousness is he with fire in his eyes the son of righteousness is he with healing in his wings hallelujah who is deborah overflow one just we're going to be very fast tonight deborah someone in overflow one deborah 
we are going to pray Deborah she is at the back you are wearing something on your head you are tying something on your head outside overflow one son of righteousness is here healing in his wings son of I'm going to pray but the person I'm seeing is wearing traditionals it's like it has a little of maroon touch on it traditionals this is what I'm seeing I will pray for you the son of righteousness is here When you find such, if there's, if there's nobody like that, no problem. My dear, where are you coming from? Zaria, I want to pray for you. Look at me, your life will so change this night, it will surprise you. There is a God in heaven. I'm seeing you crying and the Lord is wiping your tears completely. Just by his spirit. He's wiping. Where are you from? The mic is not working find out why please can i pray for you father in the name of jesus christ i release you my dear deborah is your name in the name of jesus i stretch my hands i release you from captivity i set you free by the spirit of the living god i'm seeing something that has tied you huh from head to toe but the lord is saying to release you and i declare to you by the spirit of the living god that god now is releasing you completely by the spirit of the living god releasing you right now my dear where are you coming from outside your name is deborah can i pray for you in the name of jesus who is that her name is deborah where was she outside what's wrong with her Huh? Why? How long, madam? Madam, you feel pain in your back? Severe pain? Where? We're going to pray for the sick. Huh? So when we pray for the sick, you will come out and I'll pray for you. Okay? You came with her? You're her daughter? Who are you? Just a friend that came. You're a nice lady. Come. What, do you, what are you trusting God for? Huh? A life partner. I love you. You're a very honest and sincere lady. And I'm going to pray for you. Huh? Hold my hands. Father, honor your word in the name of jesus christ give this lady a very godly man by the spirit of the living god find somewhere for her let her sit down we are going to pray i want to pray we are going to do a very quick walk tonight the power of god is coming on someone around the worship team here i just saw just like light i don't know who that person is but i just saw light around the worship team We are going to pray. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry, Lord, visit me. Please pray quickly. Lift your voice and pray. Make sure you pray. Something must come upon your life tonight.
Hallelujah. Where are you coming from? Come, this lady. You, yes. Where are you coming from? You are schooling here. From where? Your state. You are from Kaduna State. Where are your loved ones? Tell them the month of November is a month of breakthrough for your family. Huh? That's what God is telling me to tell you. November is a very strange month of breakthrough. Huh? Your dad. That's what I'm saying. Something would have happened to someone this November, but the Lord is saying November is a month of breakthrough for your family. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I prophesy to you, let it come to an end now. The spirit that kills people by November, it comes to an end now. I command by the spirit of the living God. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. It says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. Let it end. Let it be over right now. Let it be over right now. Father, I pray tonight in the name that is above all names. That your mighty power in the name of Jesus the Son of the living God. That it be made manifest across this place. Let yokes be lifted. Let burdens be lifted. Let all kinds of yokes be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now listen please. I want to pray for you. Please pay attention. Focus on Jesus. It is not just a call to have people fall under the anointing. No. I want to pray and minister the power of God. That if there is anything at all within this circumference that is not of the Christ that as we pray the power of God comes upon you please we'll have would we'll make it very fast and the ushers will bring them out we are going to shout that name that is above all names it's not a ritual wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name father in the name of Jesus I pray that you will honor your word and honor your name at the count of three together as a family of faith we are going to shout that name. Already I'm telling you, I see fire just like rain. But it's the rain of fire coming on people to end all kinds of oppressions. At the count of three, one, two, three, shout Jesus. That every power that is not of God, go now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare the forces of ancestry, yokes of darkness. Please bring them out quickly, quickly, quickly. We are praying again. Hear me. The Bible says, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. You are going to shout that name again. Not just for yourself. Not just for your family. That everything that is not by the Christ, he must give way right now. I speak to principalities and powers and thrones and dominions. And every name that is named. Are you ready to shout now? At the count of three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Release them now. Release them now. 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 Release their destinies. Keparuta shalabakata. Keposeketekete prakata. By the blood, release them now. The Bible says, even the captives of the mighty shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Was he praying? 
You are going to shout two more times. This is the second to the last time. The Lord wants to end patterns. Something that happened to someone. Your mother is now happening to you. Your mother was raped. You are now being raped. Your father failed. You now failed. In the name of Jesus, I declare. Now, this one, I see fire coming on several people. Inside and outside. Lord, I pray. Anyone here who is a victim of patterns. Strengthened by spirit. At this shout, oh God, let there be deliverance. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be free now. Be free now. Repeatable patterns that tie people down outside, inside. Be free now. Everyone who is under the influence of any strange spirit, whether here or any of the overflows, I declare to those spirits, the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I speak by the anointing in the name of Jesus, that these spirits let them go and release the families. All those in front here, at the count of three, release them, release their families. One, two, three, go now, go, 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 go. The woman holding photo, there's a woman here holding a picture. There's a woman holding a picture. Come, madam. Let every other name fade away. Come, madam. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name, every other name fade away. Madam, where are you coming from, ma? From Port Harcourt. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing a stronghold of witchcraft across your family. But the Lord is saying, these are your children. Where are they? Your children, I'm seeing two of your children in the US. Is the mic working? It's not working. Is it working? Please help us. Let there be someone who is. Huh? I'm seeing two of your children in US. How many of them are in US? Okay, three of them in US. Who is in UK? Where is the one in UK? There's one in UK. Listen to me, madam. God is going to come upon your family and bring rest roundabout. Rest roundabout. In the name of Jesus, madam, I lay my hands on you and upon this request. Turn every captivity, my God, to become like the streams of Negev, the Negev. Be free now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Over now. The power of God will touch them in the U.S., in the U.K. I bring liberty to this family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, my friend, this man, please just clear the way for me. The man with gray hair just near this one. Come, sir. Let every other name fade away. Where are you coming from, sir? Niger State. From Niger State. Are you a man of God? What do you do? I'm a pastor. You are a pastor. Where? I have a ministry. Point of joy ministry. You have a ministry. I have to pray for you. I'm seeing a serious embargo. First on your life and then on your ministry. I don't know you, sir. I've not seen anything around you. But I want to pray 
because I am seeing number one, God is taking away this embargo upon your life. But number two, I'm seeing that God is granting you the spirit of revelation, Amen. the revelatory grace, Amen. revelatory dimension of the anointing. Amen. And then I'm also seeing God raising financial support, help us, Amen. very strong pillars for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I pray for you, sir? Is it all right if right, I pray for you? Right. I hope you're not embarrassed that I pray for you. I hope you're not embarrassed that I pray for you. No, no, no. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this servant of God. Sir, in the name that is above all names, I speak to you because you believe. May the Lord shift you to a new dimension of ministry. Let the grace for revelation rest mighty upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare to you, God will raise strange financial helpers Amen. to attend to your needs. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is, I'm hearing. Who is Ezekiel? Ezekiel. We have to hurry up, but I'm hearing a name Ezekiel. Of course, I can imagine that there will be so many people with that name, but we have to hurry up because I want to pray. Ezekiel, I'm hearing a name, Ezekiel. And the Lord wants to minister to that person now, please. Every foul spirit. There is a family here. You are from Zonkua. Zonkua should be Southern Kaduna. Is that? Zonkua. Where are you? Please verify. Let's, let's make sure that. You are a family. It's not just one person. I'm not just saying one person who came. There are many people who came who are from Zonkua. We're in Kaduna State. I'm saying a family. This is what God is revealing to me. Let me pray for you. You came out for Ezekiel. I want to pray for you. What do you do, my friend? You are, you are brothers? Ezekiel, I will pray for you. I, of course, I will pray generally, but it, it may not necessarily be for everybody. My friend, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please, hold on. I hope, I hope, Yes, that's why they are coming out. Why, why all of you out for Ezekiel? Okay, I'll pray for you. The Lord is asking me to do something except that the Lord said so. I wouldn't have done it. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm seeing at least eleven people when I pray for them. Please don't be embarrassed. The addiction of smoking. Um, either drugs or this um, uh, all these things that they smoke they, I'm seeing at least 11 people and the Lord is saying he wants to deliver them now now in this place I'm going to pray for these gentlemen but I'm going to ask those people listen there's nothing to be embarrassed about I, like I said I would not call you to embarrass you but God is showing me both men and women not only women addicted to smoking this codeine or, or cocaine or whatever it is drugs the lord wants me to pray for those people so i'll immediately i pray for this i will call you please leave your friend leave whatever you are doing and you come and stand and i'll pray for you my friend let me pray for you in the name of jesus i declare that god is lifting you in the name of jesus christ god is lifting you by the power of the holy spirit and that everything that does not represent the counsel of God, let it live your life right now. And for all of you who stood in for the name Ezekiel, I pray for you. My friend, look at me. God is visiting your family, eh? You. is visiting your family in a very strange way. This, it will not reach weekend, next week, before you start getting testimonies. This thing I'm telling you is less than one week. Write it down. I speak to you by the Spirit of God. May the Lord honor this word. And for all of you who are standing in for Ezekiel's in the name of Jesus, everything around your life that is not the planting of the Lord, be delivered right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Was was well from Zonkwasa. 
Are you a family? Yes, we are the same family. This is our father, but he cannot speak English. No so problem. He is welcome. Please come. Let him come. No, don't don't let the children who cry. They are, is it the same family? Yes. Uh, don't worry. I'll pray for you. And this one too. And your children, madam. What do you do, ma? You are a nurse. I will pray for you, oh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, turn this woman's life around. Amen. And turn the life of her children around. Amen. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Um, who is what? He speaks your language. You okay? When I talk to you, don't worry. You don't have to give up. When I talk to you, you will, you will interpret to him. Eh? Tell him that I am seeing something that looks like a shrine. And that this thing has been responsible for the retrogression of everybody within this family. That people rise in this family just when they should sit down, they either die or go down. He must graduate from school before he died. That's what I'm saying. Yes. I'm seeing that this is yes. what happens yes. just when people should he settle down. Our first born, he graduated this? from school before he died. Is your father? Yes. Is he your brother? Yes, he's my brother. Okay. Oh, please, someone help us and attend to these children, please. These are your. Don't worry, my dear. There's no need to shout. Please tell him that there is a name that is above every other name. And that I'm going to pray right now. And no matter how long it has stayed, this entire family must be set free. Can I pray? What do you do? This student. Where? Maybe. You love Jesus. I love Jesus. You are going to be an evangelist. I don't know yes. him. I don't know anything. I'm just, I'm just telling you that this man, I'm seeing by the spirit, this, this boy you are seeing is going to be a mighty man of God, an evangelist. Hold my hands. I release you into this grace. May this anointing take you to dimensions untold. In the name of Jesus Christ, fresh grace for prayer, fresh grace for the word. I shift you by the spirit into these dimensions now i pray for this family and every other family that has this kind of thing that there are forces that sit on people's destinies just when people should sit down they crash down in the name that is above all names i declare be free now be free now help this girl be free now every spirit look at the children i cause this spirit now now out of this family in the mighty name of jesus i release this family from the spirit of death and the influences of the grave be free in the name of jesus christ and let me prophesy to any other family here that is under this kind of yoke in the name of jesus come out of it now hallelujah God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Please, they can go back to their seat. Now, I want to pray. Our time is gone. We must hurry up tonight. But the Lord is showing me people who want to be delivered from this addiction to drugs and smoking. L listen, no, everybody here is a product of God's mercy. There's no such thing as anybody. There are not many times I do this, but I have to obey what God is. Are you here for that case? Huh? Okay. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. So please, I'm going to give one minute. Whether you are in overflow 3, overflow 2B, 2C, 4, wherever, or in here, you know that some people are not bad they are not bad people they just need to be free please run and come and stand here right now you are addicted to all of these drugs don't be looking at anybody to say so this one is none of your business please celebrate everyone it takes a lot of courage for them to come 
Are you clapping for them? Everyone, please. There are still more people because I saw a number of people in my vision as God was speaking to me. You love the Lord, but this addiction. See, these addictions are spirits. It's not about somebody being good or bad. Look at them coming. It's not. Look, let me tell you the truth. Addiction is something that is, there is a spirit behind it. Please keep coming. Be bold and come and stand. God will set you free from it. Son of righteousness is he with healing in his wings. Hey, 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 hey. Son of righteousness is he with healing in his wings. Please hurry up. I'm about to pray for them now. So if you belong to that category, if your friend is stopping you, leave that friend and come and stand. Nobody is condemning you. It's an addiction. It's a spirit. When you see the kinds of people coming, some of them are better than you in terms of character. It's a spirit. We have to deal with this thing because it's killing people everywhere. Some of you just have dreams and right from the realm of dreams, you cannot resist it again. I want to pray a serious prayer for you. Jesus is here. Some of you were doing well. You were excelling even in life academically until that spirit just came. And it just brought you down. I want to pray for you. Some of you were introduced to it by friends. Friends. They brought you together. Gave you those things. Look at people coming. Let's celebrate them. Young and old. This is not an issue for young people. Young and old. All together. God is setting people free. Listen. Let me tell you. Sincerely. I love every one of you. And I know that many people would not have one tenth the courage to come and stand. This is a family. Nobody dares condemn you. We are products of his grace. The Lord wants to set you free once and for all. Hallelujah. Now listen, let me tell you this. Remember the teaching that I gave you. I told you that every storm is calmed by rebuking the wind and rebuking the water it is not what you hold and smoke or what you swallow that is the issue there is a spirit no amount of guidance and counseling will solve the problem you will need to be delivered and i want to pray for you praise the lord there are two things i want you to do for me one when i pray for you you have a responsibility to let some of the association because i know how addictive these associations are tell them that apostle joshua selman prayed for you and trust god for grace to leave them alone come to the house of god and make good friends are we together you are not free when your association is not free because some of you you probably have made attempts before but you will go back and you will meet those people and they will laugh at you and say forget about that nonsense so you have to trust God for grace. But let me pray for you. Please lift your hand if you can. Some of you are here. Some of you are standing for your children. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. I know that not all of you are standing for yourself. Father, you gave this as a revelation. There are many people under the addiction of strange spirits. And Lord, I stand right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I declare that in the frontier from my left to my right, let the angel of deliverance move right now across this place and cut the, help them please, my God, and cut this chains. I'm praying for all of you in front now. The legal basis upon which these spirits operate by the blood of the eternal covenant, I break that legal hold now. I break that legal hold now. The spirit of addiction to drugs. Be free from it now. Be free from it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
listen i pray for every one of you hear me i'm saying it again i don't care how it came into your life it leaves you now and forever it leaves you now and forever any association that the devil uses to keep you here in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost i set you free from them forever I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you are free. Say after me, all of you in front, say in the name of Jesus. Say it again, in the name of Jesus. I stand by the blood of Jesus. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I am free from any and all forms of addiction. I declare that from tonight addiction to drugs addiction to anything that is not of the Christ it leaves my life now and every spirit behind it I command you to let me go now I declare my liberty I declare that I am free in Jesus name let it be so for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm speaking to you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. No one condemns you. We stand as a family. We stand by you. And we agree as a family of faith. You are free from this nonsense this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Let's celebrate them. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Let's celebrate them. hallelujah now don't be embarrassed i'm going to pray from here but i'm seeing a spirit on a lady it is only married men that look for you only married men a young gentleman who can settle down with you will never be interested in you but a man who is already married that's the one who will look for you in the name of jesus whether in this auditorium overflow one two three whoever is standing under the influence of that spirit i'm declaring right now by the anointing of the holy ghost be free now shout aloud amen be free now please help that girl be free now i'm still praying i'm, I'm still sensing this anointing is still is like he's moving and searching for people i say it again that anointing that grace whatever it is that makes only married men to look for you in the name that is above all names be free now be free now the lord is showing me a door in the spirit and i'm seeing that door closed before we pray for the sick the Lord is saying to open that door. I believe that there are many people. It represents the next level of several people's lives. I stand right now. My God, I'm seeing rain just coming on people. My God, the King of glory, I declare. Everybody who is standing in front of a closed door. I speak to that door. Be open now. Be open now. Bring this woman for me. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. woman who came with this madam she came on her own because the kind of breakthrough i see god bringing for this woman will surprise you madam i don't know you but in a name that is above all names you came with her from where here in the name of jesus madam i don't know you but i speak to you by the power that raised christ from the dead every closed door be 
before you. I command that door to be open now in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Be open in the name of Jesus. As I pray for her, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every spirit that is not of God to leave this lady. Look at her tearing her clothes. You see how these wicked spirits walk. Listen, let me tell you something. Deliverance, look at me. Deliverance is not just the issue of shouting and demons rolling up, up and down. No. Now, you can see this girl. Imagine that she's your fiancé and your wedding is next week. You see what we're saying? I, I'm not saying she's a bad person. Please, don't... Mm -mm. But you, the spirit will not shout when they are joining you. It's when you have gotten married, you see these wicked manifestations. Now the Lord is that spirit. And the spirit, where the spirit of the Lord is. Are you looking for a job? Who is looking for it? I'm seeing, hold on please. Listen, I'm... My sister, please shift for me. This fair lady. Where are you coming from? Kaduna? Yes, sir. Come and stand here. I'm seeing someone shaking your hands that you got a job. Are you looking for a job? She's not here. Right now. Let us stand up. Are you looking for a job? Yes, sir. Hear the word of the Lord. I'm telling you. I'm seeing God giving you a job that will surprise you. There's, there's no need to cry. God is here to roll away reproach and to take away shame. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus, according to this that the Lord has revealed, you will come and stand here and you will testify of your job. In the name of Jesus, let the power of God come upon you and set you free right now. Now, very quickly, we are going to do two things. Please, if how many of you have written your prayer request? If you have written your prayer request, please bring it out. If you have not written it, take time to write very quickly now. Um, what is I'm hearing Baba Silas what is Baba Silas Baba Silas I don't know if that is a name or that's a name of somebody's father Baba Silas is what I'm hearing if there is such a person let me just talk to the person now quickly please submit your prayer requests um, there will be ushers, PR, help them, or whatever department. Huh? What? Give him the mic. What's your name? What's your name? Huh? Your brother is Silas. What I'm hearing is Baba Silas. I will pray for you. I'm not... Why are they coming out, please? Huh? Your father is Silas. We'll pray for you. Let me just touch you and then you go back. Let it be over in Jesus' name. Whatever it is you are standing in for, let it be over in Jesus' name. Forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, over forever. In the name of Jesus. Whatever the challenge is, over forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free from sickness. They will not say you have fibroid. I cost that devil. That lady you are carrying, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, please, all those, listen, please, we are going to pray for the sick now. Um, there are so many people tonight and we have to be fast, our time is gone. But let me say this, whether you are in overflow one or two or three, if you are coming here particularly trusting God for fruit of the womb, Whatever overflow, no matter how far, I want you to come into this main auditorium because I will pray for you. Um, alongside them, all those who are trusting God for healing, please come and stand now. Overflow one, please move to your projector stand. Um, protocol will have to help me. How many overflows do we have tonight? There are so many. rise up on your feet stretch your hands to this place cry from the depth of your heart you don't have to kneel please stand cry from the depth of your heart father this egyptian that i see today 
I see them no more forever. Is someone stretching your hands? Pray, pray, don't look around, pray. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. In the name of Jesus, turn situations around. In the name of Jesus, wipe tears. In the name of Jesus, let impossible situations turn around. Declare it. Those online follow us as we pray. We prophesy upon these requests. We pray over your request in the name that is above all names. The God of miracles. We cry, Abba Father. Hallowed. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. We cry, our Father. We cry, our Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Let me tell you this. This part of the miracle service is a very powerful part. People have recorded unspeakable testimonies, turned around by the hand of God. Father, I bow my knees in the name of Jesus. By the privilege of the grace that you have supplied, I bring before you, O oh God, the pain, the tears, the requests of your people. They have brought this as a token of their faith, as proof that they believe you. Lord, you do these things because you love us, but you also do it to honor our faith. Therefore, Lord, I stand in agreement with the Spirit and I declare that every situation represented here turns into a testimony now. Every situation represented here by the God of heaven turns into a testimony now. Whoever must lose sleep for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so. Whoever must hear instructions from God for this request to be answered, we declare it so. Whoever must be lifted for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so. Whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so. Father, I cry in your name. Let this not just be a ceremony tonight. Your people have waited. Your people have prayed honor the faith of everyone here with strange results in the name of Jesus there are situations here that need creation it does not yet exist in the earth realm we call it from the realm of the spirit to appear in the physical realm in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord, there are situations here that only you can solve. Some of them are death sentences. Some of them are issues that relate to life and destiny. We cry to you, O God of heaven, arise tonight and do strange miracles. That by this time, next miracle service, some people will only write to intercede for others. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please keep standing, everybody. Keep standing. I want to pray for you now. Thank you for your patience, but I want to speak over your life and I want you to believe every word. 
Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. I prophesy to you, number one, doors be open now. Doors be open now. Gates be open now. Gates be open now. Everyone here in ministry, I stretch my hands towards you. The fire, the grace, shalakatoskia. The unction for a new level. The operation of the gifts of the spirit. The operation of revelatory dimensions. Step into it now in the name of Jesus. Step into it now in the name of Jesus. Let me pray over your finances. This is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven and I declare by the power of prophecy supernatural supplies for you. Supernatural supplies by the wisdom of God. Every pit you have found yourself in, in the name of Jesus, come out of that pit now. Come out of that pit now. Come out of that pit now. I pray for every family here that has not yet seen the goodness of God in experience this year. I speak to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. You will return here with strange testimonies. Everything that is yours but is not yet in your hands. I stand by the God of heaven and by prophecy Wherever it is, I command you to locate your hand and your destiny. I command you to locate your hand and your destiny. I pray for those trusting God for jobs. Father, you are the one who gives jobs. I declare that between now and the next one month, oh God of heaven, let us have strange testimonies of miracle jobs. Strange testimonies of miracle jobs. I'm praying for everybody. But this prayer particularly is for the men. The grace that establishes a man. That can grant you stability. Whether financially, structurally. May that grace, please believe it. May that grace land on your life now. Structural establishment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every dying business. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. I speak by the spirit. Let it jack back to life now. I pray for your prayer life. The fire you have not seen from January, even up until September. The grace to fast, the grace to travel, wherever you are, let it rest upon your life now. I pray for you, access to the mysteries of the kingdom. The grace that can open a man's eyes to scripture that you will see it. May that grace rest upon you now. Every opportunity that once came to you but was not well utilized and has left you in the name of Jesus and by the mercy of God I stand tonight and I call for a repeat of it. A repeat of that opportunity a repeat of that opportunity may God restore time may God restore opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ every one of your family members that has been grounded for whatever reason in the name of Jesus as you are standing here may the angel of the Lord wherever they are across this nation or around the nations of the world may the angel of the Lord ensure that in this season they are lifted I declare that they are lifted
anyone called barren whether biological barrenness financial barrenness ministerial barrenness i speak to you be fruitful multiply replenish subdue i say it again be fruitful multiply replenish subdue every helper of destiny that must show up in this season for you to rise wherever they are i cry unto my god who is your god in the name of jesus may they appear before your destiny Some of you have been at the same level you have not gone down but you have not gone up either in the name of jesus this night i push you by prophecy step into the next level help them please step into the next level of your life this is the month of september when a woman is pregnant after nine months she's supposed to give birth and if she does not give birth the doctors have a way of inducing the birth in the name of jesus everything in the loins of prophecy are located for you to be born in this season i speak to you as a spiritual midwife deliver in the name of jesus Everybody who spoke evil to the ears of your destiny helper that people who should lift you but because they had an information about you in the name of Jesus by the blood I declare a reconnection I declare a reconnection our time is gone but please believe this these are not empty words they are not empty words at all let me pray for your finances again this is what is squeezing people down squeezing families down people are giving up on god because of tea and bread because of the necessities of life listen koinonia i put a mark of exemption in this season over you hear me i command poverty to leave you like the day leaves the night in the name of jesus christ This is the beginning of the ember month where the spirit of death moves upon families people who have labored when it's now time to reap they will say obituary survive by i forbid the earth from receiving your body i forbid the earth from receiving your body listen and for those of you appointed unto death whether for you or your loved ones by the name of jesus christ we extend your life in this place i pray for every student here i don't know what may be happening around your academics but if it requires change we change it now if it requires upgrade we upgrade it now if it requires justice we administer justice now if it requires mercy we provoke mercy now and everyone who is in final year here we graduate you in the name of jesus christ prayers and we're done everything that represents delay stagnation or limited progress the chain that will allow you move but not so far I break that chain now in the name of Jesus I release you make progress I release you make progress I release you make progress
Last prayer point. Listen to me. Honor is better than money. You can have money and not have honor. Honor is better than education. You can be educated and not have honor. The Bible says, and Jabez, not was more anointed, was more honorable than his brethren. The grace that makes for honor, that can pick you out of a crowd and separate you. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you now. adding one prayer point to my, my, my spirit and we have to pray it. And the sons of Issachar that they were men who had understanding of the times. Listen, I want to release grace for discernment. It's important to know you can miss seasons just because you are not alive. You can they will come back but it will take a long time but I pray for you, the grace for discernment, to know seasons, receive that grace now. Maybe I should add one more prayer point. Some of you are praying, Lord, where do I go from here? Should I travel out of the country? Should I relocate to Abuja? Should I go to Lagos? See, Destiny decisions are never to be taken carelessly. Please hold on, hold on. Relax with this thing you are praying. Listen, there are destiny decisions in life that you need the help of God. Who to marry? Where to live? How many children to give birth to? It looks natural, but it's spiritual. You can give birth to what will fight your blessing. Who to associate with? And Lot went with him. And Jonah went with them. Their experiences were not the same. I pray for you. That in the matters of destiny. May the veil. The haziness. Let it be torn into pieces tonight. I know a gentleman who had an evangelistic call. Sincere person with an evangelistic call. He went to open a church and he began to struggle to pieces as if God did not send him. No offering, no support, no open door. He was struggling because the pastoral grace was not there. Well intentioned, but no discernment. Again, I pray for you. Whatever you are doing now that is not in the blueprint of your destiny, whether ministerially speaking, business-wise, maritally speaking, I declare a correction now. I declare a correction now. Elijah was asked to wait at Bucheri for a season, not forever. And a raven brought bread, food for him, and he drank from the brook. But a time came when the brook dried. God needed to change strategy. If Elijah did not know he would die there, the same God can help you for 10 years. But by the 11th year, you will change strategy. And if you cannot discern what blessed you before can kill you, I pray for you the grace to know when to switch. The grace to know when God is saying something else. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Let the name of the Lord be glorified forever and ever. Jesus remains Lord. Amen. Where is that, my friend, who has been waiting for the altar call? He will be the first to come and stand here. While he stands, I want everybody here, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, overflow four, and all the other overflows. 
you are saying apostle i need jesus i need him fast and i need him seriously whether to surrender your heart for the first time or you are saying i want to rededicate my life he cannot be the only one here wherever you are quickly come and join him quickly come and join him i will only count one to five if you are coming from outside please rush come and join them you are saying apostle let this be the night that i encounter jesus is there someone like that one koinonia is this the best you can do two please if you are coming from outside rush run to jesus three please clear the way for them if it's for the altar call let them come Apostle, I want to come, but my friend is stopping me. May that friend leave you alone in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to come, but people know me. He says that he who denies me for men, I will deny before my father. You have to rush to come. Someone is coming. Those coming from outside, please rush, 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 rush quickly. Please. Just encourage them so that they will come and stand hallelujah now i sincerely salute every one of you hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain